All right, I, I don't know, I've got nothing to say over the intro, so three, two, one. Wow, that was a good clap. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. This is the BNH stream today on this fine 16th of October 2023. I hope you are having a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. And uh, <laughs> I've had a, uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's been an all right week. Eh, all right, I feel like I've not done like a lot of work. I feel like I've been very anti-productive. Um, <laughs> I rarely talk about external work but i just want to briefly say that like i am you know i'm super thankful for every one of my co-workers for putting up with every single question i, I i'm presenting because there are so many things going on at my work so i'm glad we're all you know on the same page there um and that's the fun part if you ever feel like you're, you're super duper stressed or you know like lots of things are against you there are a remarkable number of people like very close to you, you probably know exactly what you're feeling, maybe not necessarily how, but they definitely see it and they'll go, yep, yeah, we gotta fix something. So, you know what we need to fix? Me playing Shadow Man. Shadow Man, hold on, where is it? Hey, Where is it? Where is it? We're gonna miss the Night Dive logo. There's the audio. There it is. <laughs> there we go, so. Oop. Controller. For many thousands of years, the Shadow Men have protected the world of Control the living against threats crossing over from the spiritual the plane controller. known as Dead Side. The place got... where everyone goes without exception on, when they die. There you go. There Michael you go. <laughs> is the current heir to the best way to start a stream. Uh, the technical difficulties, I guess. Uh, so we are in the Dead Side Marigates after 45 Dark Souls. Uh, in the last stream, uh, we got, uh, the ability to climb up waterfalls, we got the ability to touch lava with my feet, uh, lots of Dark Souls and lots of places. We basically, oh, look at all these things that we can do now that you can walk on lava. Uh, but we basically went through the, um, uh, what was it? You know, it was really only three levels. It really was only three levels, but it was mostly a lot of backtracking and finding more stuff. Uh, let's continue on now that I can walk over lava. Uh, let's just push our way through the, uh, you know, the whole... Me pre not pressing the A button in time. Dude, it's been like... I've like bunged up my hands because, uh, spoilers, I've been playing Guitar Hero 3 recently. I've been trying to like play it on PCSX2, trying to get through that retro achievement set. Uh, and at the current point in time, uh, for reference, the Retro Achievement set is, uh, basically, uh, looking at can you beat the whole game on each difficulty, and can you five-star the game on, uh, just the, just the main levels, but can you five-star every level, uh, every song, uh, in the main set list, because, uh, there's exclusive guitars. Oh, 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 we could, we could use this now. We can use this. Because it's here, and you can just you can just now warp here, and we can we can get these cadeaus so that the chilling right here. How cool is that? That we're here the whole time. That warp was here the whole time, and now you can use it. So that's cool. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I've been playing so much. Uh, I none of it is stuff I've never done before. I have definitely five starred every song except. Through the fire and flames i think maybe in clone hero i've five starred malve garçon in the bonus settlers uh but in actual guitar hero 3 uh, that one really does escape me i am not very good at that song because the moment you drop a note which is very easy to do you know you lose the entire um, i guess i didn't get that cat out you lose your streak and the whole point of the score is you need to have a streak. You need to be, ru you know, running on the four times multiplier. A lot of songs, they're not as hard to five star uh, as uh, other songs because if it's like, oh, there's a solo and the solo is hard. Well, okay, the solo is hard, but you're not going to lose the entire, um, you know, the entire five star. Just based on that. There are a lot of, like, doors I just can't go through. And I thought I was going to experience something here, but... No, I guess not. Um, could talk to Johnny. Uh, Temple of Fire? Temple of Fire. 
I know I need a, a handful of uh, Dark Souls still. Uh, let's actually go this way. This will be fun. Um, I do know I need a, a handful of Dark Souls. I think we acknowledge it would have been 53. I need total in order to get to the next level of Dark Souls. It's either that or 51. It's close. Uh, the fun part is now that we can walk on lava, this whole like, temple sort of becomes a little bit of a joke. It's not 100% a joke. Uh, but there are little caverns that we couldn't go to before. This area, you may recognize, this is actually uh, at the top end of the level. So if you want to quickly back out to the beginning of the level, or if you're at the beginning of the level and you want to quickly come back to the temple, well now you got a bit of a, you know, a quicker passage to do so. Which is very neat. Very neat. Very cool game. Uh, we can also finally, how many times have I constantly looked down this corridor? And now we can finally get this. Um, yeah, no, uh, Guitar Hero 3, for if anyone doesn't know Guitar Hero, uh, which either indicates your age or just you never looked into it. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's two of these, by the way. That I don't think there's actually any others chilling around. I'm pretty sure there's none. Yeah, no, it's not saying there's others. But it's just interesting, they're both just chilling right here. You can grab them nice and easy. Uh, there's also this bit, but, uh, I might as well demonstrate. Lava that you can swim in is still off limits. Don't, don't risk the lava you can swim in. So, we can't get those. Uh, we can definitely get a ton of Dark Souls from the gateway. I've been holding off exploring the gateway for a while because of that. This is one of the worst po points I've ever seen, by the way. Literally right next to two guys. If you're going for the hitless, uh, or for the um, the deathless, that's uh, that gets in the way a lot. Uh, but yeah, now that we can walk in lava, this whole area is like easy. And there's a there's a fair bit of extra structure around here that um, you know, we'll explore around. We'll see. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, Guitar Hero Three is the third or fourth. Uh, yeah, again, can't. Touch fire, you just walk in the lava, even if that's touching your feet. But you can now uh, wander over to this side of this area and we'll find some cool things. Uh, most notably, there's a 21 Caddos still left on the level. Okay. Uh, Guitar Hero is a, is a rhythm game franchise uh, published by Activision. The, the original games were developed by uh, Harmonix. You may remember they did Frequency and they did. Um, what's that recent one they did? The one where you like put the cards down on like this like deck and you basically like swap the mix of the songs. They they also did Rock Band um, immediately after. Uh, and I forget what the story was like why they moved to Rock Band. Um, maybe Activision just didn't have faith in this whole like full band concept and EA did. Uh, whatever the case, they made Guitar Hero in 2005 a runaway success. Uh, basically like kickstarted uh, a recent trend in the peripheral based rhythm game franchise or little genre um, uh, if anyone knows like I'd say if anyone some of you people most of you will probably recognize Dance Dance Revolution uh, but some very young ones are like what the heck you, you get a whole mat and you just dance on the mat yep also uh I kept thinking there was a secret somewhere. I'm very certain it's this room in particular. I think you jump. Oh. I'll rock the jump. I'll rock the jump. This one, I'm going off the top of my head. I didn't even look up, like, where the secrets were. <laughs> uh, but anyway, because I heard through the first one uh, where Harmonix had left. Uh, Neversoft developed it after coming out of the Tony Hawk franchise. And you could definitely feel that they definitely did work on Tony Hawk, because there's a lot of things that are similar. It's got a shop. Oh, yeah. There you go. There's a secret. What's our secret this time? Uh, trippy mode. Oh, boy. I think this effect appears elsewhere in the game. It's, it's hard to see things. It's a bit dark. But it's not... Oh, no, it's not that bad, to be honest. Also, what's inside there? Is that a whole... What am I looking at exactly? Chicken leg? It's chicken leg. Um, so yeah, uh, Guitar Hero 3 was wildly popular. Uh, it was basically the height of the peripheral bass rhythm genre, so... Uh, it didn't really do a ton more than Guitar Hero usually did. It did have... I think 
Tire 2 at the co-op mode. Tire 3 introduced like these rhythm, these battles with like real guitarists, well, two of them go on the cover of uh, well, Slash is on the cover. <laughs> you got Slash from Guns N' Roses and Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine, which is some nice pedigree. Uh, you've also got a lot of like good and recognizable songs. They were getting much better and better at um, having uh, some songs that everyone knows, although there's still a lot of like you know, a trendy song of the now, or here's a song that, like, who's even heard of it these days? Uh, some classics, interspersed with newer ones, that's fine. Um, and honestly, it's like, well, your, your set list can't be 100% like songs everyone recognizes, because honestly, it gets a bit tiring. And there's something great about Guitar Hero always being, and I'm, you know, I. I I agree to this, uh, of being like, a, you know, some game that really, you know, widens your music taste. You'll have so many different kinds of music just kind of bombarded with you and you'll experience all of it and you'll be like, yeah, you know, I do like this, uh, post-hardcore. I, what is this? Yeah, I remember this was a dead end room. Yeah. Uh, I just want to go back over there because was there, was this overlooking something and I just completely glance over it? It was! This is, uh, one of the lookout towers, right here, on the, on the edge. You can see that there's another, <laughs> there's a, there's another, um, Gobi over there, so. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, yeah. No, Guitar Hero 3 is good. Uh, it definitely plays pretty fine. Uh, if you're running this on the emulator, do note that there is a big problem with running Really, I guess any game in the emulator uh, that's audio based. There was a massive audio delay. No matter what I do, there's still like a hundred milliseconds of delay. Now, in the game, you can turn. Uh, also, just in particular, that's the audio, not the video. The video is fine, and that's the part that gets kind of annoying. Guitar Hero 3 on the PS2, at least, does not have any mechanism that lets you adjust a video audio desync. It sort of assumes that the video and audio come at the exact same time. Uh, the latency setting in the game just purely affects the hit window, so if the audio and video were synced, but late to your TV, um, also this is right at the, uh, end of the, uh, the one long walkway, you kind of have to climb your way up and then hope you don't fall off. Uh, I'm gonna go all the way. Yeah, we're gonna go all the way first. Shadows. That baseline, so good. <laughs> we can climb back up. There we go. It sounds kind of frustrating. Uh, oh yeah, it is. It's pretty frustrating. Yeah. Um, so the I've got two solutions. No matter yeah, no matter what I do, you know, you can reduce some settings. You can reduce uh, your audio in the face, like on your end, so I'm like, oh, you know, I have a focus right 2i2, I can set it so it's 192 kilohertz at, with like 32, whatever the, I don't know what the actual scale is on the buffer size, but set to 32. Higher values give you, you know, more leeway in case your computer slows down, uh, but lower values give you less latency. That is about 4 milliseconds of latency and it's still, you know, I still get 100 milliseconds out of the game. You can measure it, you can use OBS, you can definitely tell, you yeah, know, nah, the game itself does too much. So, method number one, also use OBS, uh, capture the screen, and uh, record, and add a video delay of the 100 milliseconds, and then just watch that for your video, and then adjust the in-game latency to, um, you know, to be the actual latency that you calculated. Uh, that way, then, your video is now synced up with your audio. It's just that now you're playing the game with 100 milliseconds of latency, and, like, it works, but the feedback is really weird, and I'm not used to it. Because uh, every time you hit a note, the note moves off-screen, and then it hits, and you really don't know which notes you're hitting. Like, it just, it doesn't feel great. Um, solution number two is, uh, well in keeping in line with the retro treatment set, you can't modify the game files itself. A lot of people would love to just shorten 
the song, like, you know, the song audio by 100 milliseconds or so it plays earlier. Um, but what you can do is just play a YouTube video of the actual song on the side. And you sort of have to manually time playing the song, you know, at the right time. You can maybe pull up a, a full combo video and watch the highway go up and kind of time it. That generally works, but it takes a few goes. It's not ideal. That being said, my hands hurt, but I have done every achievement relating to Expert Victory. So that's 5 starring every song in the campaign on Expert, uh, at least just beating every other bonus song. Also, I love how this puts us, like, here, like, I'm very certain. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, this is above, like, one of the other rooms. There's a Caddo there, which is the most annoying Caddo, because you're just gonna, like, pop back. Actually, no, I take it back. This one's might be the most annoying one. War. War. Okay, we're good. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a pain to play it on an emulator. I sort of, since I've played the game before, I sort of played it very casually. Uh, a lot of the songs I could actually beat while chatting to some friends. Like, I, I don't know, like, I played Slow Ride enough. I don't need to pay full attention in order to, to beat it. And uh, I wasn't... I'm not going for full combos, although there is an achievement set uh, separately for doing full combos of every song, and I'm not going to get all of them. I definitely feel confident in getting at least like 15 of them. So I feel good there. Uh, this puts us... Where the heck was this? This is... Like, I remember this hallway. This is what I mean. These levels get really confusing once you start unlocking all these shortcuts, going back into rooms you don't recognize. You just, <laughs> I'm like, yep. Okay, there's that one. Uh, let's back up. This is definitely, this is above uh, the second room, I think, in that same walkway. Uh, yeah. Other than that, though, I guess, uh, yeah, no, Guitar Hero 3 is a, a, a very good game. Um, but yeah, also, I guess... Oh, he is shooting some... Oh, he, he got me there. Well, let's get the cat out, because I'm always going to... I'm going to forget that it's there otherwise. Alright, can I do a pro jump? Heck... Oh, heck yeah! <laughs> and you can hear it, right? You can hear it, Dark Soul. This is above the foyer room. There we go. We got enough Dark Souls. Dark Souls. I embrace it. He embraces it. I guess it was 51. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. It's a good game. Uh, I also spent the past week um, playing uh, the other Choro Q PS1 games. Uh, so Choro Q 2. Choro Q3. I even gave Choro Q for the MSX a go. Um, so uh, last week I described Choro Q as a fun little, uh, as a fun little, just, just an arcadey racer. It's got a uh, a quirky control uh, system where you can't steer unless you basically let go of the accelerator. Otherwise, which you'll just grip to the road. Uh, if you hold the accelerator, you will basically just slide. Uh, is that? There's one Caddo left. Oh, I know where it is. I know where it is. No, I don't. But, you know what? Like, I think now's the perfect opportunity to get everything in this level. I can't think of any other, like, object in this level. So, if we've got one Caddo left, we've got all the Dark Souls, let's 100% this level. Let's just go for it. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's no Caddo tracker, so... gonna have to ping where I remembered it was, uh, but I'm fairly certain, I'm fairly certain it's in this direction. Particularly, my thought is it's right near the train. I don't know, let's see. Uh, but yeah, it's a fun, quirky little racer, it's got like 10, 12 tracks, it's, it was pretty alright. Um, it has a little bit of a grinding problem, you basically try some races, uh, realize you're a bit too slow to win them, 
but you get some money, eventually you play the races enough that uh, you'll, one, understand the controls a bit more. Yeah, down here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because now you can walk on the lava, and there should be... Yeah, it wasn't one of those. We'll keep exploring around it. It's bound to be here somewhere. Oh. Still not. There it is. Hey, I'm glad. I'm glad. There you go. 100% a level. There's no reward. <laughs> it just means I don't have to don't have to go back to this level. Uh I think the experimentation rooms have uh, you need a later item just for, like, some of the Kettos. Although it does say you can get one Dark Soul. Um, and yes, there are 15 Dark Souls in the engine block. You can't do anything about that. Um, certainly, we, uh, it says we can get a ton of the Cageways. I think we're good. Let's go for the Cageways. Let's go for it. Actually, uh, do I go for... No, 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 let's not do the Cageways. Let's do the, the item. <laughs> I was like, I was like, once you hit a seven, you can get an item in this uh, area. Um, oh, we back up. Uh, this leads back to the beginning, but I was just thinking, yeah, like it's just right here. You got a seven, uh, a level seven power for your fifty-one dark souls. Here we are. This would be useful. Because I, I knew I would have needed this. This is the Marteau. Uh, how it works is uh, what, you can smack people with it, but you can also smack these um, drums. The feedback's a little weird, but... Oh, the middle one didn't work for some reason. But you can, uh, yeah, you can unlock these doors with this thing. And you've probably seen a few of these around the game. So, especially like right at the beginning of the game. Uh, there was not a single item after that door. It was purely there to connect the door to the, to the item. That was it. Um, uh, do we have any other uses? It is pointing to four more Dark Souls. I cannot think of the other Dark Souls right now with this item though. But you know what? I can definitely think of uh, the one thing at the beginning of this level, and then we can go back to the train and try and get some more Dark Souls. Also, Johnny. What can I do for you, Michael? I have entered the asylum, a truly terrible place. Far more dreadful than even the most twisted mind could have imagined. I suspected as much. Nettie has informed me that I must find a way to reach the five from within the asylum. It would seem that the serial killers Thomas Deacon profiled for us are, indeed, preparing for the crossing over of the Dark Soul Armies. I know that you and I may Dark pass Soul freely armies. between the worlds Done of Dead Side and Life fans. Side, but what of the five? How is it that they have been able to journey across the Vale from the Asylum to their Life Side layers? Uh, well, there was that little incident with Tommy Lee's undead gang a while back. Seemed like an aberration at the time, but thinking about it... Yeah, I keep forgetting about this, this line of dialogue you know, already happened. Crazy, but I think you should be looking for a corpse. A corpse? Five, five corpses? The way I see it, you trap two souls and keep them in a state of flux Dude, between the worlds. he's clipping in the ground. One in dead side, the other life side. <laughs> Neither can cross over from one plane of existence to the next, nor pass beyond. Here go a schism! A bridge is formed between the worlds. So, yes, you're looking for five ritually slaughtered corpses somewhere in the asylum. Jody, there are a great many corpses in the asylum. Granted, but these will be special in some I just want to hear him talk about special. Place. Of course, if you do manage to find your way across to these psycho loonies, you better have your shadow powers at the ready. But I got a feeling you're gonna need them. That is still an important thing to mention the needing of the shadow powers. Um, yeah, uh, so Chara Q2, uh, expands Chara Q1 by having more cars. I realized all the cars were based on real cars. Uh, I think it pretty comes into its own on the PS2 games, because you, you get more clarity and you can actually tell really what your cars are, but you can, you can still tell about the menu at least, uh, in the PS1 game. Uh, Chara Q2 uh, expands on uh, the Chara Q by having a hub world. There is a town you can go to, and the town lets you uncover some wonderful secrets, uh, such as finding a wall with a skeleton uh, 
face on it, and it's truly a terrifying wall. But that's uh, the mysterious shop, the ultra secret shop. That's right, we came here just for three kettos. It's worth it. And obviously, there's way more in this level that uh, we can't open up just yet. So, uh, although it does say we can enter the lava ducts because we have got the level seven, um, but I am going to go to the cageways because I think we can handle the cageways right now. Uh, so let's go back to the store because I know that there's a, uh, a bit of stuff just on the other side. Ding ding. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Train, train, train. Who you knows? You know. Uh, you may also be wondering what this thing is like in combat. Well, I'll show you. Uh, yeah, it expands it with the hub world. Unfortunately, with Chora Q2, there's not much hubbing to really do. You can find the shops for the first time, and that's kind of it. Basically, just go to the town, find the shops, move on. Some of the places, some of the shops, are in... Sort of hidden, sort of hard to find places, but only some of them. Not really a lot of the main ones, I think there's like a really awkward jump where you have to like jump this like uh, uh, like this canyon bit. I don't think I even went there. It was just for a paint shop as well. I only really went there right at the end. Um, you really need to find it throughout the game. Uh, the tracks, I think, are even better in the second game, which is very nice. Uh, it also has a very nice thing where most, not all, but most of the tracks from the first game actually appear in a bonus menu, uh, that you start, um, you know, clearing through once you beat the game. Um, but they're not actually required by the game, you know, for its main progression at all. You won't, uh, oh, very dark always. I like how we've already opened up these walls. Very appreciate Now I don't have to consider looking in there. So, yep, you know what I've been in there. But yeah, I remember this was chilling down here. It's not a particular order to these, by the way. You just hit all three. Just get a bit of a musical zing. Look at that, more caddos. How many have we got left? Eight. Can we find eight caddos and five dark souls? How many dark souls does it say we can find? Or we can perhaps find all five. That'll be good. Um, how many Dark Souls do we need as well in order to get the next level? I'm pretty sure these are when they start getting to the silly amounts. 20? Yeah, okay. So 71, away we go. Pretty much spend the whole stream just getting to that level. Um, yeah, there's not much to really say about Chora Q2. Um knowing Choro Q1. Uh, so I would probably just leave it there, other than definitely saying if you did think Choro Q1 was a little annoying, I think Choro Q2 is like a tad bit better. And if you have played Choro Q1, give the second one a try. And then give the third one a try, because guess what? The third one is mostly the same game. Again. Uh, but the difference with Choro Q3 is that um, it... Uh, oh, wait. Oh! Choro Q2 also had one really, really annoying aspect, um, and I was not prepared for this. It has, um, you're required to beat all, well, at least for the retro achievement set, you're required to beat all the racetracks in, like, the free play mode. Um, I didn't realize until, uh, awkwardly a bit late. Throughout the game, on the main menu, the, uh, the background changes as you go through the Grand Prix. There's seven races in the Grand Prix, and as you go through them, the background changes to show, like, snowflakes, and leaves, and plant, and sun. It's implying that there are seasons. Now, in my head, I, didn't, I noticed the background change. I, I knew it changed, but I didn't quite know what that meant. Uh, there's, a, there's a track called, like, Summer Raceway, or Summer Forest, or something. Um, I'm playing with a fan pad, so the translation might be very different. Um... Yeah, when you go to the Grand Prix, uh, and the background changes, you go back to the quick play, and the, that track is now a different layout. And it's a completely different, well, it's not a completely different track, but it's on a different, you know, surface. Uh, and the layout's different, and it's like, how is this just casually chilling here? There's, 
Uh, I was not expecting a secret like that to show up in that game. Um, I thought that was quite incredible. So, introduce the third game. What's the gimmick this time? Well, uh, it's got a day-night cycle, but it's not really a day-night cycle. Rather, when you beat the, the Grand Prix for the first time, you have the ability to kick the game into night mode. Uh, there is a town. The town is much more meaningful in the second game. You now can... Uh, we've already walked this walkway, but uh, hopping down... There's not really anything in this room, but you now get this uh, area over here. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head if there was even a way back. I don't think there really was, but... Uh, we'll just go clockwise around here. Because we've got this room over here, but... Uh, Imagine it's like a six rooms and a rectangle, that's what this layout is. This area is cleaner than my bathroom. Uh, but yeah, it's got a town. The town is much larger. I actually kind of, like, there's a lot of like, oh, okay, kind of moments in the game. Um, where you're just trying to uncover, like, what's the mechanics? Like, what are they actually, like, intending you to do? Um, I'm wandering through the town. I'm getting a bit lost because uh, everything is just kind of like on a grid. Um, and uh, eventually, like halfway through the game, actually, when I unlock the night time, that you can activate the night time, and suddenly the entire like town flips. Basically, there's a, the entire other half of the town opens up instead of the area you could go to. But there's a little bit of an overlap. But you can buy a map after you've already done all this other stuff. So okay. Uh, the town now has more shops, the town also has access to the racetrack, so not only do you just access the racetrack via the menu, you just clear off tracks and you, you know, you do more stuff, uh, sorry, you, you do the tracks to unlock more tracks, that's how it was in the previous two games. This time, you know, you still need to do the tracks, but you also need to find tracks in, uh, the world. There's like a sewer, there's a castle, there's like... All the, it's like, oh, okay, it actually provides a bit of character and context to what you're doing. I thought that's cool. Um, the, also, the, the, the game has a little tip system when you try to enter the town. And uh, thank you, translator, for translating them. Uh, but effectively, that's how you sort of get the idea of where you need to go. Um, or what you need to do. Uh, am I going to make it to this middle ground platform in time? Or is this thing going to come back and knock me off? Oh, I'm cutting it close. Dang it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the way back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's got a lot more character. The tracks are on par. Uh, but it's definitely... I don't know, I'd probably say it's still pretty good. There's a lot of like fun variety with... The different circuits now that they've got um uh i think in the previous game before they had um like ice and this one's got water uh, or snow sorry um so it's like it's not just simple like use the dirt tires and dirt and use the the racing tires in on road it's like well there's you know there's different elements um there's also the big wheels which is a good meme it's just like a massive like you know pair of or, you know, set of four wheels I, did, I wanted to hop down that, on that pipe. Uh. So the character is definitely still there. I also really did like how um, the overworld finally had a bit more uh, meaning to it in the sense of... Um, maybe I'll go down this way, across these beams. Um, like, there are special... Uh, the translation called them events. But pretty much things that you can do in the town. Honk your horn in this one bit. Drive into this one wall. There's a ghost next to the spooky haunted mansion. There's all this like, you know, fun little just things that will incidentally happen. And you're like, oh, okay, sure, yeah. Um, some of them are a little annoying still. Like one of them is actually on the last race of the, <laughs> like, the Grand Prix go outside your garage and a flower will bloom and you just have to witness that it's like oh okay sure yeah um but uh yeah so some of them is also like buy the fire truck like um you know car skin and then uh drive to this point and uh put out a fire
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, mm, I don't remember there being a beam that lets you go back. Oh, sorry, or like some kind of switch that lets you, uh, you know, move this, but then I'm like, yeah. It's a bit of a weird jump, but look at that. The Dark Soul is mine. Dang it! I gotta do that jump again because there's more. There's a little bit more juice over there. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely try Q. Give it a go. Uh, I gave the MSX game a go. The MSX game is very simple. Uh, basically, imagine Pac-Man, uh, except uh, instead of collecting every pellet on the level, uh, you go around a like a 2D side scroll a bit. You jump. Your little, you know, V Dub Beetle. You jump up the ledges, and uh, on the left side and the right side, you are, you need to knock down the parts to a car to build it. There are three parts to the car, the little, the wheels, the engine, and the chassis. Um, different, each level, the order is randomized, although it's deterministic. Uh, so you need to, you know, hop down and do different orders, I guess. Uh, in the meanwhile, all these other cars are coming to kill you. If they run into you, you die. If uh, they jump onto you, you die. If you jump onto them, you kill them. But if they were jumping at the same time, you die, which gets very annoying. Um, there's also a tank, and it will shoot you. Uh, it gets very annoying. And the one hit is like, yep, you're going to die very quick. Um, I didn't even beat level 3. I literally committed to trying to... Just break the the in-game record of twenty thousand score and just move on because I'm like I'm not that patient. Um, I like how this is uh, in this room. We've already been in that room, but it's just there. Someone's gonna be like, "When the heck did you go in that room?" Would have been last stream. <laughs> Pretty sure it would have been like this time last stream. So uh, soundtracks and vibes still. And I just keep mentioning this game, so... Uh, so Chara Q on the MSX, uh, for, you know, nothing to write home about, it just exists. It's strange that Chara Q had a reboot, like... Um, oh, we're back in this room with the big slides. Uh, like, it's strange that, like, it used to be this just one little, you know, platforming puzzle game. Uh... And I know it was a line of toys, and that makes more sense, but it's just like... I don't know, I just thought it's very interesting they decided to bring it back, and in a way that they got to milk bajillions of games out of it. That's like 20! There's actually a ton of Charo Q video games. Uh, so the main context, the big main one that I wanted to get to... Ooh, soundtrack's got some beeps, I guess. Alright, we're gonna try and chase that Dark Soul. Uh, the main game that I sort of wanted to get to, but I wanted to contextualize myself with the PS1 games, uh, was Choro HG... Sorry, Choro Q HG 2. Choro Q HG 2 is, uh, known in other regions such as America as Road Trip on the PS2. Or in Europe, it's called Road Trip Adventure. I guess they wanted it to be an adventure, so... Uh, I like how you can't hop up here. You've got to legit do the, do the platforming jumps to continue this. Uh, so I played two hours of Choro H... Choro Q H E 2. Uh, I played two hours of it. And, uh, pretty much, the open world has gone even wilder because it's actually a massive, massive open world where you drive between towns. You go on a road trip. I guess that's a very fun, appropriate name. Uh, no loading screens between the areas, you just drive, 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 and you end up in another place. Each town has a race, actually it's got multiple races, uh, different tiers of races, so you might come back once you're a higher tier and realize there's a different track you drive on. Um, everything's 24 player instead of at most 10 like it was on the PS1. Um, there's also uh, AI companions that you can have in your party. You recruit them, you do all the kind of events on the overworld, recruit them in your party, and then you can, uh, there'll be two of the other drivers. And uh, you'll actually make more money depending on how well they do, so you want to buy parts for them. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, lots of mini games I've experienced already. Like lots of little like weird little things. There were a bunch of mini games in two and three. Um, yeah, I legitimately don't think there's a way to actually get back up. Like, because we've done the lap, uh, and we've got all the cadets as well. So never mind. I don't think we ever need to come back to this level. Hundred percent another level. Woo! Um, do we do the playrooms? I am not confident. Maybe we can. My problem is if we look at the playrooms, they're going to be here for like all year. Uh, let's continue on. I'm going to continue on because people, you guys probably are like, you're 40 minutes in a new stream. There are more enemies here every single time. You're 40 minutes. I mean, yeah, I've picked up 11 Dark Souls, but like haven't gone to any other levels yet. Let's just uh, rock our way through this. Uh, you may be thinking, wow, you played a lot of games this week. I played one more. I played, uh, or two more actually, uh, by the same devs as the Choro Q people, because I guess, why not? Um, I played uh, Simple Volume 13, released in Japan, otherwise known as Racing. They named a game Racing. Like, just, just, that's it. Um, racing? I'll call it Simple Volume 13. It's probably the, the more descriptive name. Uh, it's, well, it's part of the Simple franchise. This is a, um, a, uh, release of games. Um, probably about a hundred games or so. Uh, released for the PlayStation 1, uh, under a lower price. These were 1500 yen, which was well under the price of other video games. Effectively, they'd be like budget games. Uh, different devs would make different budget games, uh, with different level of, you know, different degrees of quality. And, uh, yeah. They'd hit all kinds of genres and all different devs. We got a soliloquy, don't we? Though my powers are almost at their peak. The souls within me burn with a dreadful fire that threatens to consume me. I must exercise the utmost care from here on in, or find myself succumbing to Asylum's dark allure. Cool. Now, I do know that there is lava you gotta swim through in this level, but you can see... Well, there's five Dark Souls, so... We should be able to do this in two goes. Also, nearly at a... Oh, actually, at a hundred. So I could probably get more, uh... More health when I need to later on. Uh, and you can see on the map as well, this is... Uh, past the seven door to the... Uh... Oh, this is the lava ducks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why this is retracting it, yeah. There's nothing else here to actually get. This is this area with more Dark Souls and a retractor. But you know what? That's still cool. That's still fine by me. Um, probably does mean that we can go back to many other levels. It starts off in this kind of weird way. I mean, I guess they call it the lava ducks instead of the aqueducts, get it? Because there's lava right here. Can we see the asylum? No, I can't see it. Uh, so yeah, uh, racing is a racing game. I will describe the entire game. There are two tracks. They mirrored the second track. To call it a third track. There are three cars. You start with the novice car, you win both races with the novice car, then you do the uh, pro car, I think that's what they call it. Win both races with the pro car, you drive the expert car, win both races with the expert car, the mirror track appears. Win all three races with the, you know, with all three cars, or oh, sorry, win the mirror track with all three cars, now you are introduced to the rally mode. The rally mode, you think, oh, there's off-road racing. No, it's you pick the car, then you do all three tracks back to back. You also had a time limit. Do that, and then you unlock four, well, basically the four skins, because uh, it's there's four cars on the road and they all have different skins. That's it. That's the game. Um, I hope you liked it. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, this game I beat in about an hour 20. Uh, that also includes doing combinations of races that you probably don't need to do or have to do. 
Um, there's not much to say. It controlled sort of the same as Choro Q. So I guess if you liked Choro Q, this is sort of that same thing. It's got a little bit of the Ridge Racer drift going on, but it's a lot more manageable. Uh, I just suck at Ridge Racer, so that's kind of it. But, uh, two tracks seems very small. Although maybe, uh, maybe they also went, hey, you know what, let's provide just as much value as Ridge Racer. I know they released with barely any tracks. Uh, this area, this level, by the way, I know it snakes all over the place. And it's got loud music. But I know there's, like, passageways that go all over the place, and the saving grace that I have is that, uh, there's, um, let's, I haven't been using this. Ooh, a good weapon, I'll tell you that. Um, the saving grace is that, uh, well, you know, we should be able to find those Dark Souls before hitting the lava parts. You get into, like, this part, this part always confuses me, is that, like, there's, like, tons of exits and doors and places that you'll eventually find your way into. But, uh, yeah. This is the lava room, and this is probably how it's going to confuse the heck out of me. Because it's got a spinning, spinning bit. This is where the warp point is, so at least you know you know where you gotta look once you come back. And yeah, you would ride this around to the other side, but let's keep wandering through random doors. Not random, but yeah. Uh, I really don't have much to say about that uh, simple racing game. It's it exists. It's short. Um, it's, weirdly, the time limit is very aggressive. And in fact, the game is sort of tricky, like, it's easier coming out of playing Choro Q, but if you haven't played Choro Q, you're gonna feel very, you know, thrown off. The three cars control okay, although I thought the pro car was very similar to the expert car. Oh. Too much chainsawing. Too much chainsawing. Uh, but yeah. Not much to say, other than, yeah, that's it, it happened. Uh, I played one last game by the devs, and that was, uh, Simple Hello Kitty Volume 2, which is a Picross game. I think they named it something Picross related, um, but, uh, it, it's, it's Picross. But it's on the PS1, so, uh, it's got some leverages, uh, particularly, uh, when they do the 20x20 20 20 puzzles, I think SNES... Picross games really struggle with displaying that on screen. But the PS1 does okay. It does a fairly alright job. It's got like bonus spins. It's got one song that plays constantly for every level. It's got like a change of background. It's it's Picross. There's not much to say. And there's not much to really do in it. Um, it has one gripe I have, which is uh, a bunch of the uh, pictures are Hello Kitty characters, and while that's cool and all, a lot of Hello Kitty characters have the same proportions and the same outline, and that just means that multiple puzzles feel the same? Like, it's got the same, you know, ethic going on. I like how it just suddenly, you know, all that wondering and we're back to the beginning. Walking on this lava definitely throws this whole section off. It's like, oh my gosh, where can I go? Soundtrack is still its weird self. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's everything I played this week. Lots of lots of games. Um, I'd probably say the Choro Q ones are the ones I actually spent most of my time on. I am still playing through Chrono Trigger as well, um, as a bit of a fun, just kind of, I would like an RPG just to chill down with, apparently Picross wasn't enough. I think there's a Dark Soul on every door, they just want you to find all these corridors and just find your way there. You know this is just going to lead me back and I'll just go through the same route to go back, so I might as well just go back to the vent. You don't hop down here, because we've already been there. Mm. 
Uh, yeah, Chrono Trigger is a great, uh, a great game, but I can't do it justice because I've not played it enough. And I know that there's branching, well, maybe not branching, but there's like various kinds of endings that you can uh, accomplish in the game. Um, and it sort of depends on just when you feel like beating the final boss, but you s certainly can't do it, I feel, until you, you know, New Game Plus. Also, one of the earliest games to do New Game Plus in a way that feels meaningful and effective. Isn't that weird that there's a lot of games where New Game Plus is sort of just slapped on. Um, but, uh, I'll talk more about it when I beat it and I properly understand it. Uh, I've played it ages ago though, so I sort of know where it's going, but not enough. So again, that's just another doorway that leads back to, you know, the, the same spinning room. But the Dark Souls are mine, so... Oh yeah, 59! We've got 14 in the stream already, but it's been 50 minutes, so... Uh, for pace, I'm not doing amazingly, but also I never set myself targets, so... No, 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 no. I hope you like the sounds, by the way. The background music is... Always, always startling. So until we can swim, this is a... Uh, best of our ability. How many? I think it was five Dark Souls did you get? They are mine though, so. Uh, so I would, I have a bunch of topics I'd love to talk about and I actually, I, I've really written them down. I really wanted to mention them. So let's start off with HTTP2. Uh, HTTP2 is a, um, uh, a protocol, I guess, what is it? It's an application level protocol. Um, you know, it's HTTP. If you've ever gone to a website, you've interacted by HTTP 1. Probably HTTP 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, but your web browser may ask the server, Hey, can you do HTTP 2? And uh, the server may have gone, Yeah, no, yeah, I can do that. Um, sometimes they may not have. Uh, but if they can, then cool. Uh, HTTP 2 is a spec designed by Google. Um, which allows for, um, I'm going to say multiple features, but I haven't really read into what the multiple features are. I know one feature is better concurrency. One problem with HTTP 1 is that ideally every connection has a response. Every, or rather that's like, you can only send one thing, that's it. HTTP 2 adds this idea of, well, the client, you know, can send more messages and the server can receive more messages handle them all independently um, so you set up basically uh, a number of current streams and uh, that way then say for example the user is watching video and they like oh you know I'm, I'm watching my video and there's uh, you know like oh I want to see the next five packets but I actually I didn't know that I needed five packets I asked for one before I got the data back well I know I need the next one um, old HTTP is like, yeah, you kind of have to wait for the response. New HTTP 2 is like, yeah, no, you can keep sending requests. That's cool. Um, this leads to a wonderful fundamental flaw, which is, say for example, you didn't want that video packet. Like, let's say you closed the video. You, you, you can tell the server, oh, like, don't worry, I'm canceling the request, it's fine. And then the server will probably drop it. And then, you know, your number of concurrent outstanding requests goes up by one because you closed the, you know, you, you had a request, you cancelled it, it's fine. Um, yeah, that's how that should work in practice. Uh, or sorry, in theory. In practice, uh, what people found out is, uh, yeah, let's say you request something and then you immediately cancel it, and then you immediately request it, and then you immediately cancel it. Effective, uh, old HTTP asks for you to wait for a server response every time. New HTTP lets you go ham. I like how we got like multiple branching paths here, but this one I always remember. It's like, look at that. There's one Kado down there. Oh my gosh, I don't remember this uh, this beam being back here. I think they slotted this in because they knew they knew. Oh no, yeah, no, I still hate this one. It's a real funky jump, this one as well. I mean, could probably land on the close edge, but. What a weird platforming in this area. And and I would I would have gone, oh maybe this is just part of the remaster. 
like it's funky platforming in the remaster. No, I'm pretty sure it's there on the um on the, the Dreamcast version. I don't know if any levels were different on the Dreamcast and the Nintendo 64 version. Someone probably who knows more about this game would say, oh yeah, yeah. These areas become the worst if you uh, have to backtrack because you, you die as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, HGV2 effectively became uh, a catalyst for um, very easy DDoSing. Now, instead of needing hundreds of, well, you would need like tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of clients, you could sort of do a DDoS with thousands or even hundreds if you're doing it right. Uh, because every client can effectively do a hundred requests. Every client is just able to do so many more requests. Now, what you can do is you can say, oh, well, okay, every client can only have one concurrent request, which means you've effectively just removed a feature. You've gone back to HTTP 1. That's fine. It's definitely a, a fix, but it's not a, you know, it doesn't look great for HTTP 2. Um, you could also say limit the number of connections per IP, uh, well, I guess that was best way. And sort of servers already did that. So, uh, I think this actually continues on. I'm gonna get that one Kado. That one Kado. Because I'm gonna forget about it, otherwise. I love these, like, spikes. There's another. I'm pretty sure the, um, the cathedral level has the same thing. This is the worst jump in the entire game. I always save this, because, like, I never get this first go. It's so. Look. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what a weird jump. You just have to walk off in the right direction. It's... it's a very weird one. We'll get there. There you go. Recreate what I do. Walk... walk into the wall itself, not the pipe. It'll do better for you. Um... So, yeah. So, uh, this... I think there's... Hot fixes that, like, I know Microsoft's pushed that one because for, um, because this is a, a problem that has to be applied to the servers. The servers themselves, every single web server that's been running HTTP2 is affected by this because every single one of them can accept multiple connections and therefore get DDoS. This is a really widespread problem. I'm, I'm amazed that, like, this didn't get as much attention. It got a bit of attention in certain places. Oh, look. A room where a, uh, a retractor will probably be. Where's the person who's ready to harass me? I'm hearing him. Where are you at? Hi there. Get him! I'm gonna bang the drum. That was remarkably straightforward. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I was like, oh. Oh, okay then. Check it out, retractor number four. We can now go into four of the serial killer levels, except uh, you still don't have the ability to go in them as Shadow Man, so it's sort of for moot. Uh, that, I guess, exits. Uh, so let's just double check that I didn't miss anything here, such as... Oh, I guess it would have like in that, wouldn't it? <laughs> What is this, like, made out of, by the way? Because this is a very, like, weird texture. It looks like... I mean, it loops, it mirrors. It looks like, um, like a pipe organ. Doesn't it? So I guess this is meant to be a pipe organ. I think. I think that's what they're going for. It's a bit too blocky, and I don't remember pipe organs having that many, uh... Tapestry. Very weird looking, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so uh, keep it. Well, I guess if you run a HTTP2 server, keep an eye out for uh, people doing, you know, cheeky stuff to your connections. I like how this drops right next to where you need it to be as well. Uh, is that it? By the way, that might be it. That might be all we can see because this will put us back uh, at the beginning. Yeah, this is. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Does the marcher still got stuff? I'm still on the fence about the playrooms. Uh, let's offer the Caddo to the lower. Let's get that out of the way. 
And then I guess the main thing that we're really looking for is uh, we need the... Um, Oh, I think... Isn't that the Lalane? Isn't that all I need? Like, it, it's gonna tell me I can I can get the, you know, the clips of Lalane. That's what we need! Then we can... Then we can get into some real fancy business. I love how... Yeah, how many... We're probably like six... Well, yeah, I'd say on the safe part. We're probably six hours into the game. That is not the right item. Um, and so it's like, you're just going around, you're picking up items. And then suddenly it's like... Yeah, this is where the game changes on you. Because what what exactly have you been building These up to? Gifts I give to thee, O oh gracious lower, uh, uh, uh. O oh generous lower, a spiritual trade for life beyond. Ah, the life force burns so strong within me. It does burn so strong within me. Uh, so let's get that Lalane, because I know that's. That's a big walker into, like, oh my god, more of these. Um, that's a big walker into, uh, where we need to go. That will unlock a lot more Dark Souls. I think I need ten more for level eight. I think you only need, as well, <laughs> every time I go back to this menu. You need level eight to go to the Temple of Blood. That's what we, you know, would really love to get to, because then, A, you can swim. But I think you need level nine just for one last item. Just for funsies. We're not hitting level 9 this stream, I can guarantee that. Uh, da -da -da, we keep wandering forward and we'll just find a way to get an item. There's just an item, chilling in here. Actually, isn't that fun that like all the um, the parts of the uh, with flips are all in uh, this hub world? Does this count as a hub world? It does, because pretty much every level is branched off it, so... Uh, so yeah, uh, not that way though. Not that way. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out. If you run a HTTP2 server, just keep an eye out that like people aren't abusing this feature. Uh, because uh, they totally can. And uh, it's, it's rather nasty. Uh, I'd love to figure out how to get up there. Because this drops down. This is the sixth door that I used to get into here. What's over here? Oh man, I've completely forgotten the layout now. Oh, there's another seven. Cool. Burninate some fools. He is the Lord of Deadside. I'm the Lord of Deadside. Now here we go. This should be useful. The final piece of the Leclipse. The La Lane. All of this looks very bizarre. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, okay, sure, I guess. But now we have this. Let's bring on the night, as you saw with, uh, as you saw with okay, that tooltip. Nettie, I've got me all three pieces of Leclipse. So work your voodoo magic and bring on the night. Sounds like a cue for a song, but this ain't no musical. Give me the blade. I guess you just build it. Lay down, Mike. I thought you'd never ask. Is, uh, this gonna hurt much? <laughs> yes. I thought so. Try and be gentle with me. Bringer of night, Lake Lipsar. Release the shadow into the world of men. Gosh, that torso yes, animation. Ooh. On. La lune, sister moon. La lamb, the power that binds. I said every single one of those from Pong earlier. Bro, I think he just killed him. And a sorceress fell into a deep trance, her powers exhausted. And a shadow did fall upon the world of men. The prophecy is upheld. Agneta! It is done. Seek out the five. Destroy them and the evil that controls them. I must sleep. Must sleep. Mm. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so now, 
Uh, this is, well, this picture is at night time. What this has effectively done is now, one, we, well, we are Shadow Man in the world of the living. Which means all the worlds of the living, we can now, you know, use our shadow powers. Collect the Dark Souls, uh, use our shadow powers, and most importantly, actually kill and collect the Dark Souls of the serial killers. So we can sort of jump into that if I need to. Also, uh, you remember that demon dog right at the beginning of the game? Um, yeah, every single dog is evil. Every single one of them. Uh, we can certainly fully explore this actual, like, area now. It's not a hub, it is just a level it sort of donut loops around. Uh, except for... Ah, oops. Oops, still don't have that item. I think that is actually the level 9 item that you need there. Uh, I love how there's a, uh, there's a warp right here. Probably saw it ages ago, you're like, oh, okay. But yeah, there are eight Dark Souls in this area, so this is, uh, certainly prime ground for getting, uh, all but one of them. <laughs> um, although we were picking up the Caddos already, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's, let's talk about some hardware, some fun technology, uh, mostly, uh, graphics card manufacturers. Um, so there you go, there's your, there's your big thing. We've basically caused a lunar eclipse. Through pure magic, aka stabbing me. Sort of happened real quick, didn't it? I was like, oh, okay. Now, even though, you know, your shadow powers, you know, only happen now, uh, in theory, when you had the guns earlier, you could have just easily shot this padlock. But, the reason why I didn't is because, why? You can't pick up any Dark Souls. And, uh, you also need to hold your breath. Whoops. But Shadow Man does still say whoops, so... Let's, uh, have a bit of light. Yeah, this area is a bit painful to navigate if you can't, you know, breathe underwater. So I just held off. I just didn't do it until now. I think there's, like, two ways to get back up. One's over this way, and I'm hoping that this is the way that doesn't... Well, that lets you... Well, we'll see. <laughs> Ways to reduce the amount of backtracking and time I spend. That's mostly it. There's a lot of places for you to breathe, but not exactly... Uh... Look at that shadow I'm casting. The real shadow man. Uh, oh yeah, watch out, there's crocodiles. They will mess you up. Fortunately, you can set them on fire. And you can take their souls. Uh, there was another crocodile somewhere. I remember there being two of them. I'm hearing him. Oh well. I'm pretty certain he's around here. Okay. Look at that. More Dark Souls. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about some hardware. Um, Intel announced, like, last year. The Intel Arc A580. It is finally showing up to reviewers and like they're able to see it on store shelves for 180 US dollars. Uh, I do not know what's the Australian pricing, it's just not available here. So we'll do the, the like add 10% for tax, uh, convert and probably be around there. That's 310 Australian dollars which makes it $20 cheaper than the A770. That's probably not that good a deal, but wait for the price to come down. You'll you'll definitely see that price come down. I can I can guarantee that. Uh, I'm go this other way. Classic Louisiana water, by the way. I say knowing full well I've never been to Louisiana. <laughs> sorry, Louisiana people. I'm sorry. You got famous swamps. That's where Princess and the Frog happened. And wasn't like a part of like. Huckleberry Finn down here. Am I allowed to mention Huckleberry Finn? <laughs> A Monday warrior named Tom Sawyer. Uh, so Intel Arc A580. It's a it's a graphics card. Um, it's basically if I had to describe it, 
Uh, if the A770 is a full card, the A580 is three quarters of it. Uh, although it does also still have 8 gigs of VRAM. So it's got the exact same uh, memory bus uh, with and memory capacity. Very nice. Good on you, Intel. Uh, I love this door. It's just a door. It's just here. The door to the church at the very beginning of the game is like the only door you can really push. The other door is just painted on in some way. Them gators. Yeah, without your shadow powers, like, yeah, well, I mean, you would imagine a, a dog or a crocodile would die to a bullet fairly quickly, but no, apparently it's, like, worse. Um, so yeah, Intel RK580, there's not really much to say, but the price point of 180 US dollars is rather curious because, in the US at least, that competes fairly decently with, um, oh, and man, nothing's dropping the teeth, so, uh, with my torch, I don't have no torch, uh, this just leads back to that area before, that's why I backed out. Um, yeah, it, it's like, interestingly in the US, it's competing against, like, old cards that still cost a fair bit for some reason, and, uh, in terms of, like, the price to performance, with a big asterisk of when it works, the, um, ooh, I'd love to get that. I'm hearing them, I don't, I don't see them, but I'm hearing them. Um, yeah, when, when the A770 works, it's actually a fairly good card. It's, uh, it's, it's got the frame rate, it definitely does, uh, ray tracing better, although, you know, arguments could be had that the cards don't perform good enough for... Um, you know, for ray tracing to really be worthwhile. Uh, maybe that is the case for a lot of things. That is the first Dark Soul, the first Gobi we would have seen in the game back here. So how many more? Uh, I guess there'd be one more in this level. Yeah, find the Dark Soul. Oh, it'll be that one. It's on the high ledge. Right? Maybe? Still got nine Kettos somewhere though. I like how you can wander all the way back, all the way back to the beginning of the game where more of these enemies come at you. Um, but yeah, may I just say how cool it is that like you backtrack through this level, knowing full well like what it looks like during the sunset, and now it's like this very dark, brooding, you know, swamp. Everything's blue. Everything's mystic. There's demon dogs all over the place. Uh, You know, there's something very, like, you know, spooky, I guess that's probably the best word to use. Uh, I believe... I am amazed how many dogs live in the swamp, by the way. Like, oh my goodness, man. It is curious, though, that, like, the dogs have turned evil. I don't know, I guess, is, is that part of the curse? Did it mention this? Is this part of the, uh, falling into his deep trance? Legion took the power of the Dark Souls onto him? Well, that's, that's basically what they meant. We break this as well. And, uh, this boat is a door that leads down. It starts music, so you know it's good. There we go. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's an interesting card, I guess. Um, it's very strange that Intel announced it, like, ages ago, though. And it's only now coming out. It's not even been in, like, pre builds or anything. It's just been announced and happened. Very odd. Uh, we've pretty much explored this whole place. Like, I think the remaining Dark Souls, I'm gonna hope, are all in that one last little bit that I can't just get to. Um, so we'll do, the, we'll do the lap. We'll do the lap around. And then, uh, we'll continue on, I guess. Um, I need 71. Ooh, I could probably get it. I could probably get to level 8 before I even do the serial killer levels. But I think we're in a good uh, spot of time to actually do a serial killer level. So, just one. We should be able to fit one in. I know, uh, people have been longing for the serial killer levels. Is there a shorter term? Someone's just gonna be like, it's just a live side level. That's it. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, so now we got uh, two stories. Uh, one is um, I mentioned AMD uh, FSR. What is that called? Frame scaling. Ah, uh, what, what it even stands for? Um, oh, it should be like super resolution, frame super resolution, something along those lines. Uh, uh, but basically the frame generation technology of you take your game as it renders normally and using uh, motion vectors and other kinds of information about the game you generate an in-between frame based on where you think objects and pixels are moving and uh, in ideal circumstances that basically means doubling the frames without actually rendering more frames you just have frames used as context it's like b-frame context and in theory I guess can't we keep going? Don't we have more and more intermediate frames if we know the technology? I mean, it, it works for video. Why can't it work for video games? Uh, and to be honest, like in theory, I actually think that's a very fair point. And why pursuing this isn't that bad. Um, yeah, we're pretty much done. We've, we've done the lap. So now uh, we can talk to Johnny because Johnny's now the only person we can talk to for the rest of the game. Gonna have to, gonna have to tell him the bad news. Mikey, what's up? You're looking more peaked than you usually do. It's Nettie. She's fallen into a coma. Ah, I'm not surprised. She was always one for more than a drop of the hard stuff. Never knows when to stop. I tell you, she used to go like the clappers down the old white horse head. Jaunty, will you listen? The prophecy is coming true. Nettie used Eclipse Aid to give me my shadow powers when confronting the five. Now the shadow has fallen, and the prophecy is about to be fulfilled. It seems to me that everything I do just brings us nearer to Apocalypse, to the end of all things. Will you get a bloody grip on yourself, Michael? Nettie may be something of a head case, but she knows what she's doing. She knew this would happen. It's supposed to happen. Can't you see that? That's the thing about prophecies. They have a habit of coming true. All right, all right. But it seems to me that somehow I'm responsible for everything that's happening. Maybe I should just get out now before it's too late. I never saw you as a giver up, Michael. And even if we are in a situation of damned if we do and damned if we don't, it's always better to go out fight. Get as many of them dark souls as you can, build up your shadow powers till you're positively bursting with them, and then go and kick the arse of whatever's behind this. I really can't give you any more advice than that. Once again, Jaunty. I find myself in your debt. Your advice is sound. I shall do as you say. And look, if it all goes belly up, you can come back here and kick me ass from here to Hades. And if it doesn't, and we win the day, I'll be buying you that drink. Even if you are an annoying, half-witted, skull-headed snake. Ah, flattery will get you everywhere, Shadow Man. They'll be off with you. Hey, he's warming up to that snake. How very, very nice and kind. Uh, open coffin gate. Can we open the coffin gate? I don't know, man. I'm still not hugely confident on that uh, coffin gate. Uh, but where else do you think we'll be able to find stuff? Uh, oh, this! Yes! Because now we've got the hammer thing. We should be able to return to a bunch of areas in this level we should be able to get some stuff but unfortunately you'll still see that symbol on the ground which permanently supports me uh so yeah so i mentioned um fsr3 a bit ago i gave it a go in the forespoken demo um since of course it's a technology that is implemented on the game level and i don't have an amd graphics card so it's definitely on the game level um my experience of it in Forspoken is not necessarily representative of all experiences, but with TLDR is that uh, I had a bug, and I still have the bug, where uh, the generated frame immediately shows after the actual rendered frame, uh, which means I just effectively see half the frame. And in fact, I see the, the generated frame only. I don't get any visual clarity, I just get the blurrier generated frame. And the frame rate's already lowered because there's overhead with doing frame generation, so... Uh, not too happy with it. Not really... Just doesn't really, you know, make me feel better. Uh, I don't think we can do this room just yet, but keep a, keep an eye out. I, again, I swear, there should have been a button somewhere, I think, that should have made the rest of this uh, area a bit more feasible. 
So how many are we at? 68? We just passed the halfway mark and I just blinked. Uh, well it's not that, but... Let's roll! Woo. I love this. Have you ever commented that Shadow Man's jeans are very, very blue? And despite wading through, like, lots of guts and lava, they're doing okay. I mean, it's like the Hulk pants, you know? Uh, so, anyway, so there's that. Uh, AMD also introduced a technology called Fluid Motion Frames. This is a driver level feature that's available only to Radeon uh, RDNA 2 and RDNA 3 users, so... Uh, 6,000, 7,000 GPUs. I can't try this out myself. Everything I say from here on out is just PSA. Um, but effectively, it does uh, the higher level generating the in-between frames uh, on the driver level. So uh, you get that smoothing on any game you want to throw it at, and it doesn't have to be implemented in the game itself. You just go for it. Uh, obviously, you lack the information needed for fluid motion frame, oh sorry, for the FSR, you don't have motion vectors, you probably don't have, um, uh, there's something else. Someone's saying optical flow, and I'm not sure if that's quite the right word. Um, but effectively, you're going frame to frame. You see two frames, how do you, in, you know, interpolate between the two frames? And, uh, the effect ranges from... Mm, to people like it, apparently, big FPS number means good. Uh, as someone who can't test it, I, you know, I can't validate any of this, but, uh, my assumption is that, like, without the extra information, it's gotta be a really good, you know, visual algorithm. Uh, the answer is, mm, sort of. You still get some weird frame pacing issues, apparently. Uh, there's problems where, uh, I love this little bit here. Let me open up. Look at all these caddos. How many more caddos? Oh, 19, jeez. I'm already at 42. 342, we've already passed that halfway mark as well. Just power through it, just keep getting more and more of the caddos. Uh, so I could go around to the inside, I'm just... I, I still swear, there must have been a switch somewhere. Because I keep seeing the places that would definitely benefit from you know, the thing I want to do. So spoilers, by the way, it literally just was these like, waterfalls so you can climb up the higher parts of the level. And it'd be cool if I remembered where that was activated, and I should have looked it up between streams, unless someone in the chat knows off the top of their head. Feel free to let me know. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, so fluid motion frames. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% confident in its ability to provide good-looking visuals, but uh, it depends on the content, I guess. I would imagine if it's a 2D game, it would actually be fairly easy for the frames to work. The tricky part is when you deal with 3D games, and everything scales and warps and perspective and things hide behind objects and things have transparency that's that one's always a killer if you want to if you want to test any like frame interpolation thing just add transparency have an object pass in front of another object and uh you'll be like yeah okay yep that uh that was an attempt because i've never seen any of them go right that's not a that's not a dig at fluid motion frames any more than any other video interpolation <laughs> I just, I've never had a great run with frame generation. Upscaling is better in general because upscaling is, you know, it still needs the detail from the source frame, but there's enough detail. Uh, and knowing like material details as well can also help. Although a lot of the time these upscalers are starting to assume based on the context of what they think. There's image recognition. You can go, oh, this is a face. Therefore, I'm now going to upscale facial, like, you know, details to this, or, oh, it's concrete, I put concrete details. That's how, yeah, upscalers, they just need context. Video has always been a tough one. So, video is always, 
Also, I guess, uh, upscaling video to be temporally sound. That one's always- that was a tricky one with regular DLSS. Where it's like, you know, you can make one frame look better, but can you make the next frame look like it came directly after the first frame? Because if you introduce all this noise and detail, and suddenly that noise and detail changes to the next frame, you get a very, very noisy image. It's harder to focus, harder to appreciate what's going on. Alright, again, that switch to activate the little waterfall that would definitely apply on, uh, to that wall. I swear it would have been in this room. But I definitely don't see it. It's certainly not in this room. I got a hunch. Mm, I was thinking it would be like a button up there, but no, that's not a button. Hmm. Like I must be blind or along the lines. And uh, I double checked as well. I was like, mm, is it in this room? Nah, not that I can tell. So this room is pretty dry. Mop. And I checked around here. I made sure they didn't just casually hide. Anything in here? No, nope. we were all safe. I mean, definitely as well. The thing's telling me find four Dark Souls, so... Knowing the two remaining items... I don't, like, I don't suppose... I don't see there being any reason why I can't do what I need to do right now, though. I don't know, we'll keep looking around, we'll keep finding it, so... Uh... What was in this direction? This was... Oh, well there, okay. That guy was fine. Got it. Uh... Yeah, the one last thing I want to mention, and uh, let's rip into AMD on this one, uh, because this one's probably the biggest uh, goof of a story. Mm, no, it's not. The HVD2 thing was pretty bad, but this one is pretty bad as well. Um, so it's going to be like, oh my gosh, what an NVIDIA fanboy. Uh, maybe, uh, I guess. I, don't, I only want, I want AMD and I want Intel to provide better graphics cards such that we can provide price competition. It seems that NVIDIA has you know, generally, at least from my experience, I've had better runs in with the products themselves. Things work generally, I've not really had glaring issues, but the price has always been a contentious one, and NVIDIA's felt comfortable charging more for a graphics card that still performs the same in rasterized use cases as other people. There's features you get, like maybe the, you know, the ray tracing is better, I guess. Uh, you get CUDA if you use CUDA accelerated applications. There's stuff that you can use to justify why you're purchasing a graphics card at that price, but I would like the cards to be cheaper. I hate how I keep hitting you know, the limits of my 12 gigabytes of VRAM on my 4070 Ti when I'm doing, you know, like machine learning workloads, and uh, my only other options are either I get a Quadro, which costs $2,000, or I get a 4080, which costs $1,700, or $1,800 right now. Or I get a, uh, a 4090, which costs 20... I think it's at 2700 again. The sisters have awakened. Or awoken? Past sense. Look at this bit just here. Oh. It got me there. Um... So, anyway, <laughs> with that disclaimer of I want, you know, graphics cards generally to get better, uh, AMD also released a new feature for their, um, you know, the same graphics cards, uh, Anti-Lag Plus. Anti-Lag Plus basically is, uh, their sort of answer to NVIDIA Reflex, uh, although maybe they've already got, like, features to compare, but this one is like, hey, yeah, you know, let's add 
you know, functionality and capability so that the graphics card can perform some quicker API calls and better syncing uh, with games, you know, reduce input latency. Um, it does this by performing library redirection. It takes your game that's running and injects code into various places such that it can then optimize bits of things that are happening. Um, the reason why it's injection as opposed to other kinds of just graphics drawing is because this has to happen in the game code itself, uh, but apparently I think it's, hopefully it's consistent enough that they know. Did you like that? It's staircase. Um, pretty much I, I'm assuming the driver is at least smart enough to go, okay, well it's a game, I know what render loops are and applying a, I don't know, something like that, and then they can, you know, speed it up or reduce the input latency. Um, that is fine, that is perfectly acceptable, but, and th I say this knowing full well about Clone Hero modding, uh, or really any Unity game modding. Uh, what you're doing is indistinguishable from a hack, from a cheat. A, a program cannot tell, this is like Spyro the Dragon staircase right here. I'm waiting for it to activate. Excuse me? It was there for a moment. I don't have to bang the drum again, right? The drum was just for the door. I... What, what triggered the door? I was walking somewhere around here and I saw it trigger. Oh, it's the lever. It's the lever. Sorry, my bad. My bad. I spotted it. I'm amazed I didn't even go for that Dark Soul before. I'm pretty sure I could have gotten that. There we go. Lots of chanting. Uh, but yeah, this, um, this implementation, it is like a hack. I don't want to say it is a hack, uh, because, you know, probably isn't. It's not malicious, hopefully. Um, but it's, it's the execution. It's the way that, like, if a game has anti-cheat, one way that you can validate that things in your anti-cheat are, well, that your game is running as expected, is to observe the stack trace. You can go, hmm. What functions have I called? And a uh, developer would go, well, I mean, you probably called this, 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 and this. Uh, if it spots that you've just suddenly called something else in the middle, that's a clear sign that, ooh, this game might be calling external code and doing cheats. And it will never be able to validate that external code. Probably. Blame the halting problem on that one. Uh, you, can, you can never assume that, so you, you just can't. Um, uh, so, Counter-Strike 2 in particular, in detecting people with anti-lag plus on, um, casually backband them. That means that you cannot play online, your account is effectively, uh, you know, claimed as a cheater. And after a while, you will be told to the internet as a stinky stinky doobie cheater. Um, the, yeah, now obviously a lot of people who experience this are not cheaters. You're not a cheater for turning on anti lag plus, but Valve can't tell, and that is a big boo boo from AMD. Now, the main reason why they went with this approach is because they wanted to implement something that was game independent. You could turn it on in any game you wanted and get that benefit. Because one problem that AMD has compared to Nvidia is, despite having, you know, they've got research and features, and arguably you could say maybe they should be spending more money on. You know, graphics research, but okay. Um, even though they got all this research, they don't necessarily have the ability to get the game developers to incorporate their libraries and interfaces, um, you know, as easily as NVIDIA. I'll just say that. Um, not saying they can't. They totally could. Counter-Strike also already has FSR. So, I, I don't know. It, it totally could happen. Um, but they decided to go down this route where instead of getting the games to implement code 
to call their library to do the job, uh, they sort of just did it all for them. And in doing so, every single game thinks that it's cheating. Now you could say, oh, maybe the game's anti-cheat could be updated as well. Okay, well, we're, we're sort of, you know, undotted the eyes. I don't know my analogy. We're, we're sort of gone back where it's like, okay, we implemented this to make it so that game devs don't have to do anything. And now game devs have to do the thing. Or even a worse thing, because they have to start touching the anti-cheat. Uh, and you can't necessarily add an exception for AMD because... Not every AMD driver has been signed by AMD. It's a bit of a boo-boo, but unfortunately some people are running AMD graphics cards that have unsigned drivers. It just happens. It's natural. Um, also, it's a form of cheating still to have, like, your graphics calls get modified in such a way that, uh, you know, say, for example, you're playing Minecraft. You can literally change your graphics drivers to just not show, like, walls. You could do that on the game level, you know, x-ray mods do that, and that's fairly undetectable, but yeah, you could do it on the graphics driver side as well. There's a lot of ways you can go about it. Um, okay, so I'm at the beginning again. I, where is the, where is the bit I'm looking for? The button. Because now I'm back at this room again, and now I'm on the other side, sure, but... Unless I'm going insane and I just never went this way. But no, this led back up to... Here. And you can clearly see Kato's there, and that's just associated to... Oh my gosh, I can't jump. What if it was up there the whole time and I just kept walking past it? This is a bit of a walk, so I'll say it next time. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, so, uh, in response, AMD, also, I think other anti-cheats were perhaps kicking in. I think people who played Apex Legends were experiencing a similar thing. Um, so, uh, AMD, in response, said, oh, heck no, and they pulled the driver, and they sort of unlaunched the feature. Um, so, yeah, so you, at least today, on the 16th of October, 2023, uh, you won't be able to accidentally uh, download this and activate it and mistakenly, you know, get back banned. Um, but it is a little bit yikes if you were. So I believe uh, Valve uh, totally. Well, can you even jump this? That's where I did this one before. It, it is a bit of a weird looking jump, but there you go. Maybe you can't jump on the. Um, the bit where the water will go. Okay, so, uh, yeah, my thoughts of ending up on this platform is like, well, I'm back here again, like... I must be going insane, because I swear I had no trouble finding that switch on my, like, very first playthrough of this game, and now I'm just like... Where is it? And I definitely know I've been in here already. Because you can't go in there. The switch isn't just somewhere at the beginning here and I've just been like crazy blind, right? I don't see it. And that gets terrifying because uh, this is the first of the uh, rooms, and I certainly need it in this room. Oh, was it just casually back here and I just casually just never did it? It was casually back here the whole time. That was, that was the button. Alright, thank you, uh, person who's watching this VOD back, and, uh, watch me wander around aimlessly, not seeing that button for this long. Just wandered straight past it. That's how you know. That's how you know I'm good at this game. Uh, I should do a, I should do a, um, uh, who's that one guy who's like, you know, the game should have told you this. Like that kind of, like, Elitist attitude. I don't know, man. Like, I, I know I suck at games sometimes. 
I admit my defeat. This is a Rayman 2 moment. I remembered off the top of my head. I, w I was confident that was a solution to it, so. Not the fastest, though. Uh, now try to remember all the rooms where you could climb things. I'm pretty sure there were like three. Would have been easier if I had activated that earlier, wouldn't it? It's a very bassy note out of my corner of my ear. Jeez. You hear that? What is that? Wow. Okay. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, no, AMD, oh my goodness, like, what is going on there? Because, to me, that seems like a very, um, this is going to sound harsh, it's a very incompetent move. It sounds like the people who did it, and the people who signed off on this, are not experienced, and they were very not aware of this being a very big problem. Library redirection is almost always going to be caught by, like, antivirus, or not antivirus, sorry, but anti-cheat. It's going to be, you know, it's, it's a very weird, you know, camp of, you know, features that, you know, you're working with. Four more Kettos. I don't think we'd get all of them, because it'd still be one Dark Soul we can't get. Uh, I gotta somehow get up there. Oh, we can climb this. There we go. Uh... So yeah, if I if I had to if I worked at AMD, I would have been ding ding ding. Don't do library redirection. You know, do something either at the end point or you let developers implement. I cannot guarantee that games with anti cheat would play nicely to library redirection. Um, so that's my that's my two cents. It's probably more than two cents, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a huge. Like, wow, how did that happen? How did the Hey Shida P2 thing happen? There's lots of crazy stuff. I don't know, man. Like, out of everything I, s I mentioned today, I'm like, yeah, the A580, why'd they announce it a, a year ago? Uh, the, the um, whoops. Uh, yeah, fluid motion frames, I'm like, yeah, you know, like, worst case, that. Excuse me? Worst case with fluid motion frames, okay, it just looks weird and people don't use it. Um, I'm not a big fan of, like, wasted resources, I guess. I don't really want AMD to create things that no one will use, or are just not better than existing options, or things that people are sort of leaning towards anyways. Um, but at least it's like, well, that's a feature that's just, you turn off. It's fine. Um... But yeah, that's, uh, that's the whole shaboodle. That's how the world's working, that's how everything's going. I am, uh... <laughs> I am glad that there was a lot of technology-related news and technology- Oh, like, Intel 14th Gen's coming out. I, I thought I'd just mention that one. It's coming out, um, probably tomorrow. Oh, I guess I can climb this now. Nice. Um, I think it's tomorrow. A lot of retailers were saying probably the 17th, because they've been sitting on the stock for a while. That's just an official date. Um, will it be exciting? Probably not, really. Um, but, uh, what can you expect out of Intel 14th Gen? Well, mostly the same performance as last time, but a bit more on the i7, because it's 12 e-cores. That's it. That's pretty much it. Uh, I saw one headline get reposted on Reddit AMD and Reddit Hardware, uh, which was a Tom's Hardware article saying, Effectively, despite the 14900K just about to come out, the existing Ryzen 7800X3D wipes the floor in this Factorio benchmark. Uh, I feel like I just jumped this, yeah. It's a weird jump, but it's a jump nonetheless. Look at that, level 8. That's the whole reason he embraced it. Uh, we've still got one more Dark Soul. Yeah, there's some wild, one more. Also three Kettos. Uh, do I remember where this Dark Soul is? I'll take a crack off the top of my head, and if I just don't remember it, then okay. Might actually be in this direction, because... Well, this is a higher ledge you couldn't get to otherwise. My brain was thinking this room, though, so... Oh wait, this is a new room. Yeah. Because I was going to say, if, I, if I've done the stuff, 
The system would have been uh, waking a while ago. Press the things, and uh, this bit spins. This is an insane room if you left the enemies alive, so it's perfectly done. Um, but yeah, I'm not expecting really any miracles out of 14th Gen. Um, oh, there, yeah, that article. Um, it has three problems, which is, I, like, okay, you look at the article, and uh, this is something that we've seen other reviewers already test. There's a specific Factorio benchmark, where basically you take the game and you unlock the frame rate. Uh, that only spun around once. Okay, um, you unlock the tick rate, sorry. It is a processor tick rate, and you can run it in a headless, no render mode, so it's purely just computation. Uh, the game on AMD uh, 3DV cache CPUs that was a really quick spin. Maybe I should be climbing this way. Um, on AMD 3D cache CPUs, it does incredibly well. Uh, on every other CPU, it does really well anyways, because the tick rate is usually 60 frames a second, or 60 updates a second. If you turn on... If you unlock the, the update cycle, you're running the game at five times faster on an Intel CPU, and really every other CPU, or like nine times faster on an AMD. I feel like that stopped spinning well before I was like done with it. Oh, because it spins around. Dude, I don't remember. I really don't recall this room. It's been a while. Um, I see that's rotating like a quarter of a circle. I figured out the puzzle. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not a... I, I, I just thought this was like, press the switch and it keeps spinning around the room. I forgot it's only pointing in one direction at the time. Do I remember which door was the one I did not come in through? Maybe. Uh, so, yeah, so my critique of the benchmark, first of all, is every single CPU is doing better than the game even expects. I think maybe this is a feature you can use for like replay viewing. You can speed up the gameplay and watch the replay faster. Sure. Um, number two, uh, the game, you know, this is one, well, sorry, yeah, the game, oh, the game doesn't use the same, like, the updates per second is not consistent for the whole game. Obviously, as you add more and more elements to your factory in Factorio, uh, okay, quick climb, quick climb, um, obviously you're going to consume more and more, uh, cache, first of all. Cash? Do people say cash? I say cash. Um, and more and more, uh, like, there will be more computation dragging down the updates per second anyways. I'll oh, check it out, we're back here. There we go. I think that's- oh, that's every Kado. Cool. And then there's one Dark Soul, and I know exactly where that is, which is outside, and we don't need to go there. So let's- finally! New level! Finally! The level 8 door, let's approach it and let's do crime. Let's keep going. Uh, but yeah, so obviously this benchmark is not representative of the late game, it's representative of mm, early to mid game. Um, also, depending on the scale of your factory, anyways, um, you know, you'll be driving more load, anyways. I know people with unoptimized factories, um, you know, like. Maybe they won't even build up to the truly largest ones. But in general, if you're playing the game, like, okay, well, you don't have the tick rate unlocked anyways. Um, and then uh, number three, as I said, as you add more to your factory, your, your cache is being used more and more. And at some point, well before you hit 60 updates a second, aka the point where the game is noticeably slower, well before you hit that point, uh, you run out of cache, and the X3D CPU suddenly falls back to being just as good as any other Zen 3 or Zen 4 CPU. There's no, like, it's a very dramatic drop, but like, I like how this purely leads to a level. Are we gonna have a soliloquy as well? I think we are. Lots of soliloquies, but this is like the second last level. Other than all the life side levels I haven't got into. <laughs> the last of the ancient places lies beyond. These trials of Gad to prove the taker of the souls is me. The Shadow Man of Prophecy. 
tested and tried and placed upon the altar of this damned destiny. For there can only be the one in a long and uh, lusting too hard line the of movies. warrior gods. Tis I, the proof is plain upon my back, my arms, and in my eyes. I am the one, the shadow man of prophecy. Man, he's very, he's very sure. He's very certain. Uh, so welcome to the third and final temple, the Temple of Blood. I am not saying that second word. I'm sure we're just not. <laughs> it's very, it's very close. I can't say it. <laughs> I've been trying to avoid politics because I know a lot of politics happened in the world. I'm avoiding it. I'm not talking about it. I don't even talk about politics on my channel. But oh my goodness. <laughs> it's kind of fun having the level A and just being able to do a very long charge. And completely miss this sister thing. Uh, so yeah, so, like, the benchmark isn't, like, not only is it rep not representative at, like, higher levels, because ultimately, yeah, you just want the game to run good enough, but, like, the benefit of the 3 v cache is non-apparent other than better 1% lows, which is always a, a true thing. It's always good for that kind of stuff. Although Factorio is a very optimized like, game. I don't think you'd even notice a Factorio. Um, but, like, the, the whole point of the test and showing that, like, oh, you know, AMD CPUs are great and, or 3 v cache ones are, and you should use them for Factorio. And then, like, realistically, when are you ever going to experience this? You can't. Again, I, again, I keep repeating to AMD. I'm not saying Intel is necessarily better or worse, although Intel with the better memory throughput because of just the ring bus approach that they've gone through. Um, once memory ba bandwidth becomes a very important part, uh, yeah, they do pretty all right. That's, that's, that's just, you know, how it sort of works, I guess. Very weasel word response out of me. How many kiddos have we got in this level? 35. Another 8 Dark Souls. Um, since we're level 8, I believe level 9 is 95 Dark Souls, but I'm at 72. Like, I'm surprised we keep accelerating in Dark Soul acquisition. Uh, that is indeed lava. You don't want to touch the lava. There we go, a bit of a warp. Not really that deep in the level, but sure. Um, you can tell pretty much, you know, as another temple level, you go through, you collect the item, and then you come back with the ability to pick up most of the stuff. And since there's not really any more items in the game, like, we'll get this, we get one more, and I think we basically have the ability to, you know, experience everything. I can't think of any other, like, backtracking you really need to do. Still a bit of the game left. I, my my goal is, like, I know we're an hour 53 into this stream, so uh, there's not much left. Maybe the serial killer level may be too much, we'll see. Um, but my plan is this would be a five-week stream. Uh, we should be done with the game. I mean, you know, we're at 72 of the 120 Dark Souls, at 60%, so <laughs> we're sort of on the money on that one. Um, I imagine the serial killer levels don't have that many Dark Souls in them. Um, but then they absolutely throw Dark Souls at you when you walk back to the uh, piston room, so maybe, maybe not. Uh, I'll comment on the game for, for a while, uh, for once in a while. Um, yeah, the, the platforming starts to get kind of more... Uh, it doesn't necessarily get harder, but it's more like... Platforming. It's literally like, here's a moving beam. So there's some bits that are pushing you out, which is definitely going to happen a fair bit on this level. It happens in quite a lot of spots. There we go, push that, which now turns on the pistons. I think he needed it because uh, you can't jump forward, it's too far, and these things were both sticking out. I think that was the reason. Something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm curious if uh, I'm just going to keep dying because of platforming or if I've got this. 
this certainly is a bit, you know, whoa, whoa. Easy, easy platforming. Cause yeah, every level you've only got your one warp right at the top of the level, so all the platforming you do is all for naught. If you drop down into a pit or anything really. So that's why the goal is pick up the item. Just get that item out of the way. Then you don't have to worry about any of the platforming. Uh, also, as the last temple, you'll be... You'll, we're finally done with the Sisters Awaking. Is this not the most precarious thing you've ever seen in your life? They don't make these easy. They don't make these, like... This is probably more painful than the um, other versions of the game where the camera controls are a bit, you know, less free. Go. And, then, and then that's the point where you just drop into the lava. Uh, that is indeed just uh, shallow lava down there. I guess that's the term we'd use. Come on, come on. Get all these fellas out of the way. Don't need them. Don't need them. I forget which way progresses and which way it's gonna lapse around. I'm hearing oh, you're just you're just taking shots up there. I think this laps around over here. Oh, it doesn't even just lap around. It, uh, it's literally a uh, bit where you bang the drum. First we bang the drum, then we get the item. There we go. Probably Caddo's, but uh, if there's one Caddo in the next room, then I will have the funny number for a moment. Yes, also banging the, the stuff does consume your, uh, your tooth meter, so <laughs> just note that if you didn't see that happening. Uh, we are now a funny number of Caddo's. Hooray. Okay, so I thought I remember all these things coming all over the place. Cause like, look at that—they are spinning and they're rotating on their own, like little mechanisms there. So hi there, someone taking pot shots at me. I'm gonna walk straight past you. Hope you don't mind. Ah, we're right at the end here, and I remember uh, this is mildly painful because, again, you got to do some jumps over lava. Uh, you got five switches yet again. Every single switch will probably awaken some sister. These platforms sink. You can't stand on them forever. And just commit. Just commit to pressing all these buttons, I guess. I don't care that every single button awakens the sister. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. You can't stop me. It's not like I have to grab a ledge. There we go. Okay, okay, let's bolt. Let's fail. Let's do it. No! Oh, she tripped me. No! Oh, pain. Pain and suffering. I gotta go through all that platforming again. Some things like, oh, I guess I activated a switch, so some of it's a little, you know, sure I can go back on it, but darn. That's what I get for not saving. <laughs> Completely self inflicted, but still. Uh. So we are two weeks away from. Uh, the end of the spooky season. It's not entirely the end, but we'll still have uh, Halloween falls on a Tuesday. So, 
you got Halloween costumes or other kinds of fun ways to celebrate the spooky season. I appreciate that Halloween, like, I mean, I know, you know, corporatization, I know, I know, and saying, oh, it's the spooky season, stuff like that. But, like, legit, I love, you know, like, you know, gallows humor I love. I love just, you know, this kind of macabre, you know, kind of atmosphere and, and vibe going on. A little bit of healthy spookiness, you know? What are the things that, uh, you know... I, I was gonna say, what are the things people are afraid of? And that's a, that's pushing it, but like, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, ghosts are very... You know, full of mysticism, like, how does it all work? Are ghosts even real? You can tell. Gotta do this climb again, the real climb right here. Um, yeah, no, I, I love Halloween. It's 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 a it's a great time. Even if I'm crazy introverted and I, I don't go outside, trick or treating's weird in my neighborhood because everyone like really stays to themselves. Or usually people hit the city and then they just kind of club. I don't know. That's that's been that's been what I've observed. I don't know. Uh, let's drop down and then get decked. Cool. Okay, all I gotta do is not get killed by all of these sisters. You can probably just dance on this platform. It's kind of an annoying place to fight them. Especially, they're firing so many of these. And it's the red ones as well, so... Oh my gosh! I'm probably just gonna get killed. Just go for it, just commit. Uh, you probably... Uh, no, I didn't hide anything back here. Cool. Because I was gonna say, uh, weirdly, this drops you not here. This drops you, uh, on the other side of the level. I love this, like, canyon background. Like, what's going on there? You know? Whoa. But uh, one last laser to give us... I'm just constantly getting shot by these things. We now have the ability to swim in lava. This is the final of the abilities, which I will still not mention by name. But, uh, um, but uh, yeah, now uh, there's pretty much not many places that you can't go in the game. The only thing is uh, we've seen a couple of spots. There's an icon on the floor. And, uh, that means something for the one last item we need once we get level 9 at 95 Dark Souls. It's not actually that far away, it's only 22 away. Finding these things under the water is uh, probably a little more painful than it needs to be. Um, also, yeah, there's an entire like second half to the uh, temple that I just haven't even like gone through. Dark Souls. We still got a few more Dark Souls, and we should be able to pick up most of them. Like it's gonna tell us uh, how many Dark Souls we got. Nothing in this level, nothing in that level. You know, we've done everything. Um, but yeah, most levels would probably now say, yeah, there's like you can get all the Dark Souls. The Lava Ducks get four. Uh, this one get four, I guess, because you need that item. But it's, yeah, it's it's pretty much at this point in the game, like, if you haven't done a, a serial killer level, now's your, your opportunity, because you certainly can get the, you know, the Eclipsa, which means you should be able to, to go ahead and do the serial killer levels. Uh, I'm going to keep going back, just back to this one, because uh, there was a bit of lava that we could swim through as well. Like, all the way back at the top. Now, also, I would just like to mention that on... I think it was on Friday last week. Friday the 13th, which, by the way, very nice. Friday the 13th in October. Um, or, actually, no, it was Thursday the 12th. It was Thursday the 12th. Sorry, everyone. Um, uh... 50 years ago to the date was one of my favorite albums uh, came out in October 12th, 1973. I posted this on my Fetty timeline, but uh, uh, one of my favorite albums, Selling England by the Pound by Genesis came out. And I love that album. I love it really. You know, so, 
so much variety, so many like fun long developments of ideas and motifs, and uh, lots of fun technical bits, great performances, uh, great melodies. It's it's a culmination of everything I really really do like about <laughs> about progressive rock, and uh, it's well worth a listen if you've never heard it. You know, give it a go. Uh, I saw it, I saw it, uh, Steve Hackett play it live, uh, last year, um, which was also good fun, uh, so, it's just, yeah, I wouldn't exactly, uh, like, I was gonna say, like, does it keep getting better? It keeps staying good, that's, that's the way I'd phrase it, because I, I think it is one of, one of my favorites. It's got a little bit of quirkiness, it's not a 5 out of 5 in my eyes, but it's super good, so it's a 4 and a half. Uh, there's another album, I'm still trying to go through, like, a uh, bunch of uh, 1973 albums that came out, you know, this time last year, and my schedule is completely all whack, and I'm running out of weeks in the year, so uh, sort of just going to kind of lump them all together. But I do know that, I believe, on Thursday this week, uh, Quadrophenia by The Who came out. I listened to Tommy, and I liked Tommy a fair bit, so I've never listened to Quadrophenia, so someone's going to be like, oh my gosh, you should listen to it, it's better. We'll give it a go, we'll give it a go. I just like being able to like go through all these uh, passages now and you can just swim through the lava. And uh, now one, there's no risk of falling in, uh, but also now it's like you gotta swim through and uncover all these like areas you never really saw going through. Like there was just this you know, tunnel here that leads to this little room full of all of the, the swinging guillotines, like all of them. They're all just chilling on the side here. Whoa. Fortunately, Shadow Man is a man of shadows, and shadows cannot be cut by just simple, simple devices. They put a Dark Soul up here, and it's mine! Wow! Let's climb up. Uh, oh yeah, this is like room, lava, must be, must have stuff in it, I guess. Yeah, if you're collecting all the caddos, it's just like, yep. No, <laughs> there's, there's definitely going to be pots of things in here. I think maybe they should have done like something to help indicate where the caddos are, maybe. But I haven't needed it for two levels, so who knows. Maybe it's just a problem on the first playthrough where you don't know where everything is. Although, I don't know, I'm still rocking, like... I don't think my memory was that good that I remembered where everything was. I definitely knew I looked things up. Um, I'd still like to maybe see if I can find all the secrets as well, but... Like, I know there's definitely some on even the serial killer levels. Uh don't exactly recall where I, I the only I only remember where one other secret is as like an actual secret everything else is just like I don't know do I leave it as a as an exercise for the viewer if you enjoyed this let's play let's play through please so it looks like I could climb up you know like it's got the, the waterfall bits again uh, could I not this room? No, no, it's got the slope, so we'll come back for it. As in, it'll be on the other path, so. There we go. I, yeah, I was like, yeah, I didn't take you out. Is there one more, or was it just that one? I think it was just that one. Swimming through for Morkado. Everybody likes a Morkado. I really like my Morkado. But I don't really know. It's a very forced rhyme, but I'm sorry. Is there nothing? Is there no Kados in this pool? Perhaps that's the case. Intriguing. And unfortunately, you can't step on the pedestal to like loop back around to the start. And I don't want to warp back to the start, because it means everything will respawn. So, uh... We go back the, uh... 
the quick way. Through suicide. Although I think you could just jump out this way if you wanted to. Oh, I saw that part a while ago, yeah. listen to like more cool music it's definitely uh like I, I mean i don't know i still i love my music and even like soundtracks like this this game it's like it's very different it's very like wild and kind of out there and filled with all of this like fun industrial sounds um sort of reminds me i like i i, I don't know I've, I've, <laughs> it's probably a shallow take but uh i don't know it reminds me of quake uh one but it's uh trent reznor just noisy kind of backgroundy soundtrack that's not necessarily got like a melody or something but it's just you know a rhythm there's something committing something going to it i guess you'll probably be a little tired of like this temple music because uh every temple has the same music game designers were like oh no i want to drop there we go stand here and walk through uh, this is how we do it. How do we do it? How do we do this? Do we have a switch down here? I remember what happens, I just don't remember where, so I'm just going to walk back here later. I definitely know we can do it now. So. Okay, time to discover the other side of the temple! Amazing! And yes, there is another door over there. Yeah. I guess, yeah, if I had to rip into this game for a couple of things, I would definitely say, like, aesthetically, um, it is a lot of the same. Until the serial killer levels, but it's like, yeah, like, I mean, you saw me activate that, that was after you get seven of the ten, you know, levels, that's a lot of the Dark Souls out of the way. That's a lot of, you know, lead up. Oh, this room. Every time I walk into a room, I'm like, oh, that one. So, this, yeah, this turns a little wheel, allowing you to walk through the, the hallway that's on the other side. This, uh, this turns on the, the waterfalls. We sort of saw in the previous area, so, uh, I might either have to go back there all over again. You know how it could be. <laughs> just, ah, yes. I turned this thing on. The backtracking is now told me to do this. It happens. It happens. Um, but certainly, yeah, I feel like all these temples do, um, you know, aesthetically blend into each other. They've got the same music. They've got the same enemies. Um, they are all sort of like, you know, you get a different ability, and design-wise, they're all very different. Like, this one's got, like, two chambers. Uh, the first one had that big staircase, and then the giant long, like, lava chamber. Um, the second one was, like, that whole ring, and we basically explored that all today. So. Spin. The sisters are very awake. I also, I love how they keep activating right when you, uh, you know, I've left the area. It's just spawn like seven of them on you. They need to get it, they need to, you know, make this game more challenging, because honestly as well, like, here's thing number two, uh, most of the enemies are sort of jokes. I'm like soaking bullets, I'm soaking all the damage, and then it's like, yeah, but there's enough, like, kills with the shadow gun, they drop health, and I can just use the health to 
you know, continue on my merry business. And it's fine, that happens, it's just, yeah, it's on the easier side. Maybe that's my, uh, it's like, oh, you should've been playing on the horror of the horror. I was like, maybe I should've. But, oh well. We should talk about the good things this game does. Like pushing that block to allow you to go back here and turn the wheel to go down. I believe this leads out, yes. We just want to climb up here and get another Dark Soul. I still, yeah, it is still a good fun game though, in terms of like, it does a lot of collectathon things really well, which is great given its time. It's right in the, right in the pack. Um, I guess it probably didn't do, I mean it did well. I guess it just didn't do like amazingly you know, long term because the claim died a very tragic death of releasing uh, BMX XXX. The sister's awake. Yeah, you can you can look that game up if you want. <laughs> it's a very curious release. Very very curious one. Uh, they really like their uh, their guillotine hallways, don't they? And they like their caddos on the ground. How many? We need 17. There's 14 more in this level, so it's be a stretch to get uh, you know the fourth health power up before the end of stream. But uh, I'm just gonna eat every single one of those shots, apparently. Lots of climbing as well in this stream, I've noticed. Dude, if I picked up Dark Souls this quick, it would be like, you know, we would have hit level 9 super quickly um, at the beginning of the game, but, uh, there we go. Don't worry about these things. Oh, you can't hit that button because it's on the ground. Actually, can you hit it? Nah. This is a very short-term puzzle. There's nothing, you don't have to think too much about it. Swim into this chamber. We got a button here. This will lower the water level or the lava level. It's a very short term, short lived button. And then you have to hope that you know where the spikes are. Very fun. Hit this button, it goes back up. Why do that? Because it goes up a little further than it did before. Once we wait for it, uh, it's lava, okay? How fast do you think it pulls in? You're like swimming through it. I, what was with the 90s and thinking lava was just like red water? So many video games do it and it's like uh, lava is never at all this like viscous. Either that or everything is just eternally hot. Hey, check it out, we're back up here. Go. I can now experience the lava falls firsthand. How many dark souls at six? There's still one more in the slug. No, there's not. Interesting. Okay. Perhaps do I just return here later? We, we can fit the serial killer level in. Someone's probably going like, no, please do the serial killer level. Yeah, I'm pretty confident I've seen everything in like the extremities of this level and I know that you've still got to use the other power up to you know, get the last few bits so there we go okay that's 24 kados sure okay let's now finally uh, you know we got a open coffin gate let us which level was it Cathedral of pain. Here we are, back in the cathedral, where it all began-ish. There is a very particular level you must do first. That is the only catch. Technically, you can do any of these levels. But in practice, I'm very certain you want to uh, do uh, 
the Jack the Ripper level first. Uh, I'm trying to identify his portrait. It's not that guy. Uh, this is a, this is a very, like, I guess it's, it's, it's very annoying if you, if you don't do it in the right order. It's not a blocker, it's definitely not that guy. Um, yeah, it's sort of annoying, but it's like, the Jack the Ripper level has a certain item that tells you the things that you, you'd need, and otherwise I'd have to look them up <laughs> if I had to pick the wrong one. Not that one. Okay, cool, we went to all of them before I picked the right one. Someone was probably like, oh, it's the door on the left. It's like Mario 64. And then when they added in the two extra chambers, it's like, oh, okay. Oh, hi there. How are you doing? It is, I believe, this guy. Because he had the mustache, didn't he? It was the guy from the intro. Listen, I'll, I'll know I'm in the right level when I, like, when I, uh, you know, enter the thing. So, what do we do? We use a retractor. Walk up to the, uh... For the corpse that's been fun ritual slaughtered there he is say hi hello slap this thing on his chest my god it opens thus and there is more within and within the journey continues let it be so and uh just interact with it and uh whoop. Oh, this is level. Cool. Welcome to, uh, Down Street Station London. Uh, every serial killer level just has one Dark Soul. But they do connect... This should be useful. Yeah, this is the thing, by the way. This is the item you need. You are mildly screwed if you go to any other one. Because this journal is, uh... Well, oh, one spoiler is who he is. Uh, it describes the asylum. It has a chimney. There's a chimney up there. Uh, it describes the whole schism thing that you figured out already. Um, also, I guess there's a picture of that guy in the, uh, in the, the other place, so connect the two, I guess. Um, basically just how they work, as well as, uh, the five symbols, I guess. It's just plot, mostly. Um, every level also ends with one of these soul gates, and, uh, and also these, uh, true forms of the Dark Souls, I guess. Also this, I guess. Uh, but, <laughs> note this. Does this look a little familiar? This engine block? Uh, in fact, there it is. There's the six codes that you needed. Remember how, um, uh, this... Yeah, it would have been the last stream, I think. Um, where we, you know, we got to the end. And it was like, yep, you need to somehow know what levels to tune everything to. This is the book that tells you. Probably could have guessed 555 on the first one, but uh, at that point on, yes, you'll need it. You'll need this this journal. So look at these rats. Oh my goodness. Uh, you can, of course, go back as well, and you can also always just warp out. That's a very cheeky Keto spot. Oh my gosh, they program doors. If only I had a light. Uh, I believe this is like loops around. The music in these levels is always rather interesting as well. I'm going to try my best to grab all the Kedos though, because I'm pretty sure, like, none of these levels really require backtracking, unless it's to find the secret that I am not aware of off the top of my head, in which case, whoops. But okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure you exit out through this tube. Uh... But yeah, these levels are, you know, in the real world, and you can travel to this level, you know, the moment you get the retractor key, and therefore pick up the, uh... Uh... Oh my gosh. Where am I going? Where, where is this going? Uh, you can pick up the retractor key as soon as, uh, you have the ability to really... Sorry, yeah. Oh, you pick up a retractor key super early, and then you just, you know, commit to this level. But, again, you can't do anything when you get to the end. You see the boss, and then you'll be like, ah. He's too hard. And he doesn't die.
Don't you remember? This is exactly what, uh, you know, London looks like. Very dark and poorly lit. And there's an incredibly overdriven, like... What's, what's, uh, would that be a flu? Is it actually a flu? Playing that? I believe this actually directs to the end of the level. Where I'm going right now. So we should head to that end rather soon. But I'm amazed how long it's going on for. They just put a flesh room in my London. They put two of them. This should be now this is the fun thing. This is the, the fun part. So remember how I mentioned... Uh, is there a picture for it? No, there's no picture for it. It was just in the, in the, um, the, the playrooms. There was this one area, uh, and it had five of those objects. You can redeem these objects if you manage to find them. Also, uh, I guess I have to show the serial killers actually being serial killers for a bit, so, uh... Is this actually how, like, people were, like... They managed to paint three different rooms. Not at all good. Oh. Oh. Oh no, there's Booba! There's Booba in, in, on my stream. Let's, let's not show that. It's 1999 Booba, but it's Booba nonetheless. Yeah, uh, for a while I was like, oh, you know, they marked this stream as mature, how could they? And then I'm like, yeah, no, that's actual... strewn bodies, like, no matter how you put it. Uh, this game certainly... You know, they are serial killers. They put street lamps in my sewer. There's gotta be some abstract nature to these levels, right? There's no way this is like a real... Like, layout. Any place would ever use. Uh, I think... One thing I'll say about the bricks. You know how they do that. Dude, he gets to commend the Brits. Uh... I went to the lower... No, I didn't go to the lower door. I went to the upper door. That's what it meant. I thought I was going to the level backwards. I was like, hey, what am I going this way for? Uh, this definitely is a door that opens on the other side, though. So... Not very odd. I'm just going to keep wandering uh, this direction. The level will eventually loop back on itself. Somehow. Uh, here's another lift. Where does this lift go to? Actual locked off wall. That's how you know I'm going the wrong way. That's how you know. Uh, also I guess, yeah, the full symbols on the back now that we've got all the, um, all the abilities. We're just lacking one item. What a, what an interesting loop, I guess. What an interesting, like, lap around the building. I hope you like dead people, cause there's a lot of dead people in here. And just flies all over the place, man. Unfortunately, Shadow Man is, uh, very late, I guess, with just the technical term. And he holds his gun sideways. Maximum aiming. Uh, this room. You know, I'm pretty sure this just leads to the end of the level. Like, I've sort of missed the entire rest of the level. I'm surprised it just let me go to that lift. Uh, we've still got 20 more caddos to find somewhere. But they're probably just along the lines of the level, like, I don't think there's any, like, weird little hidden areas, hopefully. 
flick this. There you go, how lovely. Slows them down. Quietens the world. The world needs a bit of peace and quiet, you know? That's what Shadow Man does. I really should give him Shadow Man a flashlight though, right? This is where the shadows really kick in. Another hole. Look at these caddos, they're just chilling in the corner. But dude, there's another one. Yeah. What are they doing? Chilling there. They're doing it again? Nope. Oh, yes, they did. It's a corner nonetheless. It's not the corner, it's just a corner. Classic London. <laughs> Ask me to never work on the sewers in London. It's something I just never want to do. It's a thankless job, I know. You shouldn't have come here, Michael Lewis. My coming here was unavoidable. It is prophecy. My destiny. Your destiny is to die. That is the fate of all mortal men. But I am no longer mortal. I cannot die. Ha! Dying is easy. I have achieved that end more than once in my existence. And now, I have returned as a bloody messiah, an avatar resurrected, a divine servant for my master's great plan. If dying is easy, then you won't mind if I blow you away, you pathetic little man. You may try to achieve that end, Michael Loire, but I warn you, you shall not find it a simple task at all, for we are many. Whoop. So, uh, one, uh... <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, is this Moonlight Sonata or Nocturne? I'm sorry, it's Nocturne, ain't it? He crawls on the ceiling, because obviously people do that. And, uh, yeah, he, he, he just, he, he goes ham. Well, I guess he probably don't need a torch anyway. He probably want this. If you're gonna get these homing shots, I can probably just get them from all over the place. Uh, do your best. Try and deal damage. Um, since I'm level 8. A little easy. Well, that, that shot didn't stand there at all. There you go. If you deal enough damage, he um, becomes a bit bloody. And at this point, uh, you need to be using the Shadow Guns. Which is, it is at this point that, yes, if you were not Shadow Man and instead just, you know, regular Michael Wawa, uh, you can't kill him. He's impossible to kill without the Shadow Gun. And then he drops his Dark Souls. As well as also a cheeky triangle. This cheeky triangle is uh, what you need to exit the level, which is right next to here, basically. Um, but yeah, that is officially one serial killer serial killed. Taking his Dark Soul, because I guess he had one of the Dark Souls, which allowed him to jump on the ceiling. Naturally. Uh, what do they call that? The Prism. Uh, we've still got like 14 Kato, so I'm still gonna look around the level, but that is basically how it goes. Where are we going? I'm pretty sure. Oh my gosh. London, what are you doing? You gotta make your areas easier to navigate, bro. Just put some lights here. Well, they did put lights in, and it's still too dark. I feel like I'm playing Tomb Raider with all these, like, you know, grid-based <laughs> rooms. Am I gonna get copyright struck because this song is, like, going on for long enough? Please be royalty-free version. Here we go. This is the end portal. So, uh, we'll, we'll visit here at the end. I need to get the, the caddos. We need to find them. Looking around for some caddos. Don't know where they goes. I already did that song already, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, hopefully, uh, I'd, I'd imagine next stream we could just knock off pretty much most of the other serial killer levels. I guess I only have three more retractors, as opposed to, you know, there's four more levels, so... But uh, at that point, then, there's actually no order, really. And in fact, there really is no order, it's just making sure that you visit this one first, just to get the book to tell you the codes. If I could redesign the game, I'd probably, like, not have the codes, because that's kind of annoying that you do one of these levels before the others. And you, there's no indicator. There's really no indicator other than he's just the guy from the intro, I guess. And this leads me into, like, an interesting point, um, where, like, the remaster does this relatively seamlessly, but I always do wonder, like, they had the intentions to have five serial killer levels, and they only ever got three of them in for the actual, like, end product. So, what were the original, well, like, you know, what were they doing at the time? I guess, is that what the, the serial killer levels that we got now, is that what... Uh, the number of times I mentioned serial killer. I've already got the heads demonetized, this isn't... Uh, there we go. So pretty much, uh, yeah, I thought I was navigating straight to the end of the level here, and I guess I was. Either that or the game is perfectly cool with two equally, you know, equally linked pathways to lead to the end. But it is so Tomb Raider this whole level, I swear. Maybe they just wanted to pay homage to it, they were just like, yep. We love Tomb Raider. Alright, so this should lead right back to the room that we basically started in. There we go. But now we got a Nocturne, totally not Moonlight Sonata playing. And uh, yeah, back at the start if you want. You do need to go to the exit though, because the exit warps to the, uh, the engine room. And you're gonna need that because, uh, there's an exclusive area in the engine room that you can only access via here. The warp to the engine room only gets you to, you know, where all the pistons were, but not to the switches. There's like a video of a guy who like takes a blunt and then he like listen to this song of it's just like people editing like all this like renaissance art around him while he's just staying motionless in his chair. They really used the whole thing, didn't they? Oh, here we are. No entry. That... It looks a little noisy. I'm hoping they didn't just, like, upscale that one. But you never know. And now I'm looking at these wall textures a bit, I'm going, oh, they might have... They might have upscaled some of the textures. It looks fine in some cases. In other cases, I don't know. But... So, other than that, it's, like, actual, like... Subway. Uh... Very barely, but you can tell, yeah, London Underground. Man, yeah, it's a weird texture, ain't it? Toy lays. Everyone's gotta have a good toilet area in the, the video game. Oh my gosh, the toilet was a secret. What do we get? Uh paintball, what do we get? I think pea soup is the one. Uh, wow, yeah. That is indeed pea soup. I cannot tell what is going on. Everything is blue. Good secret. Uh, you can indeed combine these. You can do pea soup and trippy mode if you wanted to. The pea soup is probably too strong. Oh, never mind. There we go. That's, that's the effect we wanted. Uh, it's poop. 
Have you never seen poop before, Shadow Man? Yeah, at the very least when I was saying like, oh, you know, like, a lot of these levels feel the same, the moment you enter like a real world level, it's like, yeah, no, this is very different, and I'm... Maybe not in these circumstances. Hmm. Uh, like, I'm very certain that, uh, there you go, just follow the not the sign direction. It is remarkably empty, and it's like... Drawings on the wall? I, I, I can't explain it. Are they just like ads that existed at the time? Slash down the middle. There's more dogs though. Shadow Man talks a lot in these levels as well. I, always, I think that's rather interesting. You get a cutscene with the, the serial killer themselves. And the warp is here, by the way, so you can indeed warp back to all these levels. If you're on this screen, it's in, uh... do Where is it? Oh, it's, it's this one. Yeah. I am blind. I can, I can read, apparently. Got it. Uh, but yeah, oh, it's, it's bizarre that, like... I mean, yeah, you gotta access these later in the game. And, uh... Very different vibe, but I don't know. That's kind of. I guess that's a thing a lot of games did at the time. Like especially like Half Life was a notorious one because it's just like the chapters wouldn't really return. It would just be like that's the level, that's that. Maybe that's like an old school game dev thing, and I'm just too used to games like Crash Bandicoot where like you know you have basically repeating environments. This is uh, you know first level of the game, and then halfway through the game, it's like, this is first level two. <laughs> Looks like nobody's been down here for a very long time. I assume this is like... This is how he carries his operations. There's 12 more kiddos. There's 11 more kiddos. There's 10 more kiddos. There's gotta be a way out of here. Shadow Man just commenting that this is indeed a bit of a maze. And it's very hard to see because everything is super dark. Do the side jump to get a bit of speed. I don't think I ever. I mean, I've, I've definitely not been to underground London sewers, so. Freaking doors all over the place. Actual train, by the way, just casually spots Shadow Man. Got it. Uh, we go this way. And alright, you turn around. I definitely know whose level I do second. There we go. Nine more to go. And there's not a lot of enemies as well. It is just like it's gotta be some way the hell out of here. Atmospheric, kind of just searching, and you just have to know that that's a box that you can push in. Just cash. Uh, is there anything around here? Nope. Okay. Everyone likes a good metal uh, room. This place thinks worse than dead side. Well, that's not even because of the dead people. That's just London. Down the hall. There you go. I made fun of London. You have to. Everyone likes a good old trap door as well. Don't they? It's not the very characteristic 90s level design. I don't know what's up with this. Like, what I guess it's just an exit grate. It's on both sides. Maybe if it's like it's too much water, it drains somewhere. Okay, we can now do the jumps once more with feeling. 
because now you can see exactly which ones uh, explode. Which is almost all of the, the end ones. Made it. I mean, don't you love exploding sewer grates? I do. Okay, there is. We got seven of those. I'm gonna count them. I'm gonna count them off so I don't keep pausing the game just to check. <laughs> Good old, good old Nocturne. I'm hearing things, not seeing things. It's like when you play Minecraft and there's like monsters on the other side of like a wall and a cave and you just have no idea which direction you're coming from. It's just that. Looks like some kind of lever. Oh, it keeps clear. Other than that though, I guess you just progress through this level. Like it it is oh, it feels a bit longer on this direction than the other direction, doesn't it? Oh, oh don't you dare combo me. That's illegal. It's not allowed in this district. I would really appreciate the other seven cadeaus any day, though. I'm not gonna keep dragging the stream on if, uh... Uh, that's back to where we were, though, wasn't it? Was it? Nope, it wasn't. Look at all these pictures, man. They even made... You know, trapezoidal pictures just for the slopes. How cool is that? And it's totally not because uh, it's part of the wall texture and they needed the wall texture to pitch down. Everyone likes breaking boxes. Lots of breaking boxes. Good fun. Down street. There's a place you can go. Always go. Down street. Is that the song? Oh, I think the other pathway actually has a... Yeah, because I know this is actually the way to continue. So if I keep going around this way, maybe we got a loose caddo just chilling. Maybe? Yes? No? Or was it here? Oh my goodness. Yes, there's two caddos. Cool. Okay, four to go, four to go, four to go, four to go. I'm gonna lean around this way. So I'm pretty sure this way has hopefully more kettles, but there's two more, cool. Two left, two left, two left. We're doing alright. I always just see like pumps and barrels and I'm like, oh please just have the kettles. Cause these levels are not as like replayable, I guess. It's like, oh, you do the level and that's it. Alright, maybe the train has one, two. There we go. Oh, God. Oh, there's one left. Never mind. <laughs> Let's just hope it's, uh... Let's just hope it's somewhere. Please. This almost looks like the same place as before, but trust me, it's not. Nocturne is now tempt- uh, is now taunting me, it's like, oh, you thought you were gonna go to bed. Listen, uh, if I feel like I've just explored it, I'll just move on. Because I also need to do the, the, the next area as well <laughs> before the end of stream. Even though I know you could just save the game. I'm gonna hope that the cat is just chilling in this room somewhere. I hope you like metal grates. This is a very metal grating room. There's gotta be a way out of here. Just jump out here. Oh my gosh, Moonlight Sonata ended. And it's back. 
do 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 <laughs> There we go. Oh, there it is! There you go, see, I knew it was here. Uh, now we just gotta figure out how to do. Uh, I guess we just do this jump, don't you? What's with this texture? What's going on here? Now I'm very curious if they just upscaled it, like... You sure? <laughs> this is the first time I'm really noticing this. Yeah. Climbing along. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord, I can climb. That's... That's indeed it. Very dark room. Good thing I got my torch, which is almost out of juice, by the way. I should probably would not use it anymore. Is this like an actual crypt at some point? Like, we've got cross things. That, yeah, this is definitely where people are, are dead. There's a door. We are still not. haven't met back to where I need to be, but since we got all the cadavers, it's like, well, there's no mystery what's in here. I also realized, okay, that's, that's where we started. Yeah, I also realized I could have just shot this. Technically loop back. There we go. Okay. Time to navigate to the end of the level. And then do the, the part of the engine room that's right afterwards. Uh, this away. Because they they need you to, to witness the serial killer in some way. So you gotta you gotta see his craft. And what did Jack the Ripper do? He ripped. I think. Sort of. I guess. Wandering through the level. <laughs> Uh, that's the X, uh, like the, sorry, the loop back. So we go this way, and we're finally almost back at the beginning. <laughs> or we're back at the end, oh my gosh, I'm getting my words minced. I'll tell you no. Dude, this level, someone needs to, like, create a map. Like, actually to draw out this level, and really every level, because they legit, like, I'll, I'll say this again, this game is a bit of a labyrinth, and every level, every location you go to is just... Rooms, corridors, everything snaking all around. And I'm out of torch because uh, naturally it uses juice. And I've definitely blown up every single barrel. So you're gonna have to wing me wandering through the dark for a moment. Uh, I think it was quicker if I go this way and then turn right. Nope, turn left. And then turn right. And then it was straight forward and somewhere around here, somewhere in this direction, to my left, to my right. I think it was around here, yeah. There we go. Finally, back to the end of the level. Use the thing. It'd be weird if you had more than one, but every level technically has one. It's pretty cool. Very fun, uh, fun little portal at the end. Enter it and, uh, you just travel back to hell, because why not? Uh, so we are back in the engine block. The engine block is actually, like, six little mini areas. And, uh, unfortunately, if you're the kind of person, well, if you're the kind of person who likes collecting Dark Souls, listen out. There's no Kadoos, so there's no mystery in any of these pots. Great any of these barrels, but you do need to sort of listen out for the Dark Souls because uh, I don't think they evenly distribute three for every serial killer level. I'm pretty sure some of them have more. So we'll just uh, knock off a couple of these fellows and we should be able to knock. Oh, that is a locked door though. I think I'm a slowpoke.
Oh yeah, this, I, I mean again, if you never played this game before, this, well one, this game's a bit of a treat, so definitely recommend it. And two, uh, this game certainly tests your, your navigation skills, there's a lot of just understanding the, the level and really kind of going around and finding things. What does that do that opens that door right near the top? So where does this go? Is this just enough? It's another door. Will we ever find the door? Will we ever find where that door leads to? I don't know. I'm just like saying something off the top of my head and then it's like, oh, that's not... Who knows? Who knows what my brain is acting like now? Drops down. So I guess that unlocks this door, which is right where we were navigating around. So that's cool. Uh, what was to the left? Death and taxes. No, it's not death and taxes. Isn't this area a bit easier when you can walk on lava? Although you probably should be walking on lava. I don't think there's enough Dark Souls to pick up before you can walk on lava. Remember, that was the first, uh... Oh no, it was the second, sorry. That's how you know, late night. Keeps cutting through all these, like, musical motifs as well. That's a fun noise, by the way. Are you enjoying that noise? Well, oh, not, not the background as well, but like the, the actual new enemy noise. I mean, they're definitely prepping you with like health and other kinds of things. Uh, that's an unlocked door, but I'm pretty sure you see that guy, and you're like, hmm, okay. Uh, and remember, from the, uh, from the book, you gotta let him free. You gotta go for him. Uh, so meet the, uh, the true forms. Uh, these guys mean sort of serious business, uh, particularly because they fire exactly the weapon I'm firing at them. So, uh, they're not actually that bad, because they're really slow moving projectiles. You kill them, and they always drop. Yes. Lots of blood, but also they always drop a dark soul. So we'll see a few of them, mostly around the engine block, and one outside the engine block. Uh, but that's... Uh, I don't want to say it's most of the dark souls of the engine. But it's definitely, uh, you know, we got to have some stronger enemies at some point. There's another one, by the way, just so you like one. He's, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. You could lock on. <laughs> You've barely seen me lock on in this whole game because the auto aim is fairly generous and you can aim with the stick pretty pretty well. Yes. There's another Dark Soul. So remember, the next level is 95, or 81, so a fair bit off. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, I mean, if I collected every other Dark Soul in the, uh, in here, I don't think it can, though. But there's still a lot to grab right here. There's another one. Just thought you might need another one. Oh, he's locked away. I really love their bullets, don't they? It's because this guy's got the execution hood on there. Let's free him from his captivity. You are free, my man. I am your master. And he starts shooting me already. That's right, they can do the ground pound attack as well, but... Oh no, man, that's like... You got, you got tools at your disposal. These guys... They're not too bad. Again, maybe the horror, the horror difficulty will probably yes. mean something a bit more. The Dark Souls are mine. You just gotta collect them Dark Souls. That's, that's how it goes. How many Dark Souls did I have at the end of the last stream? It was 45? We're at 82? I'm curious. Nah, this I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I was like, I'm curious how much longer this game actually is, but then I'm like, nah, 
that point. Although uh, I have been rocking some like you know, three hour streams basically, so this one is just about to hit three hours. If you've been sticking around this whole time, by the way, like you've watched this whole like stream up to this point, if you're like on the you know on Twitch itself or you know, on the pod, who uh, does you and you stuck around for a very long time? Um, don't early exit, by the way. You want to keep committing to navigating around these uh, labyrinths. Because uh, ultimately, you need to turn off the piston. It doesn't matter how many Dark Souls you pick up in the game, although it definitely helps a ton. It is your goal to find this piston room. You then got to figure out which piston room number you're at. Uh, and I don't know if I can easily answer that, other than... That's the start, so I assume this is piston number two. You go to your book. Uh, I'm gonna hope this is one, two, four, and it's, it does take a really long time to switch these. So, uh, we'll have a go, and we'll hope that this is one, two, four. go, two, and then last one, and if not, then we'll just try the other combos. Turn that down, and if that's correct, there we go. Oh look, there's a two right there, I'm blind. And there you go. You do that, you have successfully turned off one piston. One down, uh, five to go, because there's one right back at the beginning. I'm just going to navigate back just to make sure I didn't miss the Dark Souls along the way, but probably not. There's definitely no Kato, so don't need to worry about barrels and things like that. Yeah, I'm just curious if there was like an alternate like pathway or anything on the way, but other than that, I think we're mostly good, so... Uh, this was just, yeah, like, there's a, there's a doorway over there. I'm like, oh, where did that doorway go to? You never know. Oh, okay. You never know unless you check. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, definitely we know down here. Even this area just feels very differently designed to the rest of the game. Whereas, like, I don't know, man, all those temples, it's like, uh, they all blend in my head. You know, I like me a good temple, but... You've seen one, you've seen them all. The playrooms, it's unique. Uh... We already went over there. The game's gonna give me playroom flashbacks. I think we're good, because uh, the only other thing I can think of is that there was a door we activated as like a way to get back. And we're only like seconds away from seeing it again, so here we go. How does my brain work? How do I like, you know, showcase just like maze-like level design? So if we go back to this room, I remember there was a door right on like the far side that was also locked, and I just don't know if that like activates that door. Uh, set door? Nope, it is just a closed door. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. So, uh, here we go. Let's just walk right back to, uh, not down street. You gotta watch out. They've moved the bar a little bit. Uh, let's move back to the prophecy chamber just for funsies, I guess. And, uh, bunch of these enemies keep spawning all over the place. And we'll save the game. Here we go. So, how many Dark Souls do we get? We've got 82. We've got 37 on this stream. I think, if my math's correct. Uh, lots of Kados. I can redeem a few more Kados if I wanted to as well. Uh, we did the first Hero Killer level. We got the ability to swim in lava. Uh, we did the Eclipsa. Lots of stuff happened this stream. So with that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this stream or you uh, didn't enjoy it, one of the two, it's a binary decision, uh, you can, you know, subscribe on Twitch. Follow on Twitch for uh, alerts that I'm streaming at 8.30pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time every single Monday. Uh, if you 
missed parts of this, uh, you can view the VOD on YouTube where hopefully it doesn't get completely demonetized because there were boobs in the stream. Hopefully not. We'll see. Uh, if YouTube's giving you problems, by the way, with uh, ad, you know, ad blockers and stuff, just use like pipes or stuff like that. I, I don't mind. Uh, figure out a way to get around the ad blocker. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully YouTube doesn't keep giving people problems with that because that is really annoying. So uh, yeah, wherever you are in the world, um, don't let politics get in the way of things. Uh, stay safe if you are in a serious part of the world. Uh, and other than that, you know, eat your greens, don't stay up too late. And uh, see you all next week, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Peace. Have a good one, everyone.